I don't know. It's it's longer lasting than the outdated style of Civ Five as far as art goes. That's how you know where my where my attention <laughs> lies because I'm telling you about the art, and not actually any of the gameplay. I mean, that's fair. Um, I like playing as Vietnam because their whole they they have it's it's like kind of handicap, but also not really. Their whole thing is that they can only build districts on uh, forest, rainforest, and marsh tiles. Uh, oh, but. Okay. But they get really strong bonuses in there, and their troops are really, really strong in jungles. And well, yeah. those three tiles. So they're yeah. really hard to invade. Which I think is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Vietnam. Yes, Vietnam. Uh, they're, they're kind of similar to Japan because uh, Japan's whole thing is building very efficient clusters of districts next to each other. And Vietnam has a similar thing where their military district gets culture for every district that's next to it, which is cool. Oh, okay, so it does benefit, like, if there's a lot of... Specifically, there's, like, a lot of jungle tiles, I suppose. Yeah, they they always start next to jungle tiles if they're on the map, but, uh... Their, their military district is the only district that doesn't need to be on jungle tile, funny enough. <laughs> Probably because if it was on jungle tile, it would stack... You get you would stack the bonus from being in the military district and also the jungle, and that'd be too much. Because, <laughs> yes. because when you build a uh, their military thing, it removes the jungle tile underneath it or whatever. Vietnam superpower. It's I looked it up, and Vietnam is like C tier, whereas Japan is like S tier. God damn. Which is fine. Uh, unfortunately, my friend uh, who is. Black uh, is really sad because almost all the African civs are rated like F tier, D tier, except for Mons Musa, who is A tier. Damn. His Mons Musa's thing, as you may know, is just money and a lot of it, and he's really good at that. He do be getting that gold. He do be destroying Jeff Bezos. He do be. Just because Mons Musa was my neighbor in my latest Civ 6 game, I was listening to a lot of that rap song. <laughs> I thought... I thought you were just gonna say, just because Mons Musa was my neighbor in, you know, high school. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, he, he he was there and he would always give people like the... He would buy the same trees that you should go and just give them for free during class. Oh, hell yeah. What, what, a, what a nice guy. It was a real Chad move of the teacher being like, All right, if you answer my question, you can have one Twizzler. And he's like, All right, I got a box of Twizzlers. Here's Twizzlers for everyone. <laughs> everyone teacher, gets like a ton. I'm <laughs> throwing them out of my fucking gold plated car. Yeah, the teacher was like clenching her fists and green, like, yes, Monster Musa! <laughs> Damn you! Damn you! <laughs> it's funny because she was a history teacher who was teaching about uh, West Africa at the time. Ah, oh, so, so she knew. She came here from the she came here from the past to play some shooting games to suck ass. <laughs> Damn. It's segue me. Thanks me. <laughs> anyway. Zach, are you yeah. there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> Nothing to contribute. I'm just playing the game. Fair enough, I guess. Game and... So, Adrian, I wanted to ask your opinion, or if you've seen it yet, of the uh, Dungeons & Dragons live-action movie. I saw some of the casting for it, and I was like, I don't know any of these fucking actors. Yeah, I only, only know Chris Pine. Chris, Chris Pine, not Chris Prine. Yeah, um... I don't know, some of them kind of are a stretch for their class, but also that's kind of part of the point of modern d is any character be any class, more or less, and you don't need to fit the archetypal. I'm a bard, I wear big fluffy pants and a big feathered hat. Uh, Too fair. The, bard, the bard just looks like a fucking paladin or a knight or something. So, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced on the designs, but I don't think I need to be. Fair. I have no idea whether it'll be good or not, because I haven't watched any trailer for it, I just saw the casting call. Oh, uh, yeah, there were, I think it was a trailer yesterday or something. I, I watched it today, um, and I was... I thought it was going to be given the Monster Hunter treatment and what video game movies do, or, well, game movies, I guess, of, like, oh, a person from the real world gets sent to this crazy like a, like fantasy world. Yeah, like Isekai, like the Monster Hunter movie. 
and I was gonna be pissed, but I was very glad to see that it was not that. It was like, Wait, hey, it's a fantasy movie world. Was isekai? The Monster Hunter movie was like kind of an isekai. They didn't die. Uh, it was just like a portal or some shit. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't watch know that. It. Yeah, the live wow. action Monster Hunter movie. Did that explain why it was so bad? I heard it was well, not good. The live action Monster yeah. Hunter movie was produced by the same guy who did the Resident Evil movies, and it was just another excuse to get his wife work. Wow. Well, and then we got the new Netflix Resident Evil. Which apparently is lower end of okay. I heard it's worse than the other ones. <laughs> I believe the it, but Resident I heard I heard that it starts looping in on itself. Where like, like it gets better. It gets no no, no like it gets so it bad gets so that it's stupid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey boomerang. Magical boomerang. That's the reward for finding all four tingles. Noise. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's not an isekai. It's just like, hey, it's a fantasy world. Not that hard to understand. Honestly, um, maybe um, it's just because I'm culture deaf, but I, I I feel like there has been a depreciation in the recent years of just classic medieval fantasy stuff. Probably. Seems like there's always a twist where it's sci-fi or it's not the genre, which is... Keep it that way. See, Zach, this is because Zach loves that shit, and I'm like, no. <laughs> They're like, Zach, Zach has to, he has to like the movie. He, 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 he's the, he's the critic. He has the opinions. He's the opinionator. We have to, we have to try to appeal to him, and they never do. The opinionator is, is my Zach. villain name. It's true. The opinionator <laughs> is a really good sandwich they serve at the local diner near me. It's, uh, well, okay, I think it's good, but you know, some people have really strong opinions on it. <laughs> God damn it. It's got some really bold choices in the in ingredients. I like the idea of the opinionator being a sandwich that no one can make up their mind on how good it tastes. <laughs> Everybody has good. their own opinion. Exactly. No one has the same opinion. Yeah. So, how are there only one left MacGuffin on the. I think they got all the MacGuffins. Oh, we got the MacGuffins? What's the check mark for? Uh, we have to. I don't know. The. The. The bird. Actually, you know what? Eh! Wind oh, run. yeah, the element wasn't there. So, we just did the water dungeon on Saturday. And we got the water element after fighting a giant Octorok, but the, nice. what you calls it, the, um, when we went to do the, the wind shrine, that element wasn't there. So that's why we're going here, because it's, it was taken away. Damn. I don't actually know how to get there, but I'm just going to keep going until I find it. I mean, fair. Fuck around, find out. Don't. Don't. Tell it to stop. I really like the this mountain area. I just like how it looks. I like almost all of it except for the like weird dust particles. Because oh, like I know good. Adrian said that they're supposed to be like tumbleweeds or whatever, but they don't look like tumbleweeds. They kind of just look like piles of glass <laughs> don't stop oh who have this glass lying around these fucking litterers you zoom in it fucking rager you zoom in it yeah it's just piles of alcoholic beverages <laughs> so grant i have a question for you I were you, you are right? you already familiar with minish cap or no you aren't okay so i want to ask you a question the very first dungeon we did in this game do you remember what element it was Grass. It was earth, right? Grass. It was earth. Weed. What was the what was the item that we got in that dungeon? Like, what was the key item? Big suck. It was a it was a it was a jar full of like either suck or blow, right? Um, oh god, damn! Yeah. Right, it was either full of suck or blow. Um, we did the. Were you here for the wind dungeon? 
Oh yeah, you were, because that, that was the because that was the one where it took me like two hours to figure out how to get through it. Um, so what was what was the key item that we got from the wind dungeon? I remember the gloves, but that wasn't the wind one. It was actually. Oh, was it the gloves? Yeah, the the, the digging gloves that allow you to dig through oh. the earth are in the wind dungeon. Well, that's a little hmm. <laughs> make you go hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to bring that up again because I I've, I've been thinking about that for a while. Where it's just like, why is that? No, <laughs> the mushroom. And you cross the gap, and it is fucking a monsoon. <laughs> oh, I can just push. What's down here? Did I do this before? This looks familiar. This looks very familiar. Look at those guys. Look at that ding dang little guys. I, no, I, have I think we did do guys. I have a question, Zach. Yeah, that's me. From a game design standpoint, how do you feel about if you have a bunch of players, right, who are going in a big boss fight, and then they go through a dungeon, and during that dungeon, you give them the item items that will be useful in the boss fight, uh... But they don't is, need to is use the, them. Is the encounter impossible without this item? No. No, it's just, it just becomes much easier if you have the item. Yeah. Um, how often? Like, is this is this a like one-off thing, or are you, or is this like a consistent uh, design theme that you're using over the course of like multiple encounters? Well, normally I don't need to do this because. Usually, it's not very easy to come up with one unified, oh, this item is going to be very helpful for this, but this is, like, to long story short, they're going to go into the heart of a volcano and fight a fire thing, and I'm giving them some stuff that helps them against fire things. So, Water. the reason why I asked the second question is that, on its own, I do not see any inherent problem with this design element that you've proposed. In fact, it seems totally fine. Uh, it's just, if it become like, if... <laughs> I don't know if, if you're like if you're like designing a game and that's how you beat every encounter then that just becomes trite and, and boring but other than the, that I think it's fine the way that this because the way that it really works because this is like obviously a and d uh, I'm not going to give them a thing that protects all of them I'm going to give them a low level scroll of resist energy and if they use that scroll then one person gets a little bit of resistance for a little bit However, if the wizard, instead of using it, just copies it into his book and then casts it at a higher level, then he can protect the entire party with much better resistance, but he needs to go through that effort and know, like, oh, I should do this. Are scrolls or just consumable? Use it straight up. Um, yes. Dep depending on the edition, they are not used or used when wizards copy them into their book, though. What about in 5e? In 5e? I think they're technically not used. But okay. I don't know. It, it, it depends. So on the based on the fact that you have described a little bit of intrigue that goes into this process, I think it's I think it's great. If great. you cast scroll of resist uh, energy and you drink a ton of coffee, does it still work? Uh, no, that's that's called remove fatigue. Damn. If I cast if I cast Scroll of Resist Energy um, and then electrocute myself, what happens? <laughs> it depends on how much, how hard you electrocute yourself and how strong the scroll was. I take 40 D8 damage. 40, 40 D8 damage. I don't think there's Scroll of Resist Electric that's going to save you there. <laughs> but what if it, but what if it, but what if it just barely helps me? Is that good? So, it depends on the addition. In 5e, you would just take half damage. In 3.5 or Pathfinder, first edition, you would take a set amount less damage based on the potency of the scroll. Oh, like a, like a flat amount? Yeah. Hello. Hello, Hello Sava. Hello. So, what if usually... I What if I eat multiple scrolls of resistance? Uh, just, eat, eat. just eat them, just eat them like <laughs> potato chips. Well, first of all, that wouldn't right. do anything unless you were the that's how I That's how I cast scrolls, though. That's in my character. For, that's on my character sheet. First of all, sheet. that wouldn't do anything unless you were in Pathfinder First Edition and you played as the occult archetype called Book Eater. 
<laughs> I can't real believe thing. this is real. That's actually a real thing in PF20, thing. which I fucking hate. There's no, there's a, there's an, there's a subclass for a class called occultist called book eater, where you eat books and scrolls. That's fucking. That hurts sick, me. Dude. I'm about to say, I don't know. I don't know why me. you. I don't know why you think that. That's. I, I don't know why that hurts you. That's because it's awesome. on a really. Sh it's on a really shitty it's like base awesome. class called occultist that I no one do, likes. I don't eat books. I don't. Don't. I want to read. How do that you digest book? knowledge then, Saba? Yeah. Okay. Claims to like books. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't even eat them. <laughs> Doesn't even eat them. You. Can't it's even tell Reader's me what. Digest. Can't even tell me if Reader's Digest. Can't even can't even tell me what herbs and spices go best with fucking Harry a Potter Bible. two. Wow. Harry Potter two. Not a not a real fan. Yeah, Harry not Potter two. Electric fan. Boogaloo. <laughs> I don't know how to get to this fucking area because what did I just get? I got the I got the ability to swim, so I'm assuming you got a boomerang. I, uh... No, but the boomerang you is like boomer. bonus. You got, the boomerang you got is like boomer. bonus nonsense. I have brief. Fun news. You have briefs. Uh, I underwear? do. They're really Congrats. comfortable, man. Wow. Uh, I've got uh, brief fun news about uh, me and myself. And uh, I don't think this is fun news. This is so fun for me right now. Uh, basically, TLDR: I fell and I broke a bone, my foot. What the so. fuck? Yeah. Oh, so that's what you guys were posting about in the in the Discord earlier. How important okay. is it? Uh, I'm not. It's not my ankle. It's like it seems okay. I'm not sure. I'll have this, to go did in. Did this I think happen I'm in using. Ireland or right after you got back from right, Ireland? Did you play right kick the bottle? I got back yesterday. Did you play kick the bottle? I told you not no, to do that. No, I was just walking. Someone filled the bottle with Fast cement. walking and I fell. No, that Grant, were you not there when I explained kick the bottle? No, I don't think so. Kick the bottle is a fucked up thing they do in, I guess, Ireland that I heard a story of, where a bunch of hooligans and like Irish thugs will just like hide, but like in the in the, in the middle of the night, like when people are drunk and stumbling around, just leave a bottle on like a curb or like a sidewalk somewhere, and if someone kicks it, they all rush out and beat the shit out of them. Oh yikes! What the fuck? <laughs> I don't even think I like, remember hearing that. We should do that for stream. Yeah, we should we should have a stream yeah. where it's like it's like a prank cam, but instead of a prank, we all just rush out and beat the shit out of someone that kicks our bottle. Yeah, that's our bottle. The Is that how I one. ended up with a broken? It's, it's mainly meant to scare Probably. drunk people so bad they piss themselves, and people, I guess the Irish get a laugh out of that kind of thing. If they, well, if they piss themselves, it's it happens in a very specific fun. area of city of Ireland, if I remember correctly. The city of Ireland. Yeah, Ooh. a city called Ireland. Yeah, I, you know, I it's think like more... it's like New York, New York. You know, I was I was about to say I think more <laughs> places take up from New York where they name a place in their in their city. I think in their the country. capital of each. I think the capital of each like large landmass should just be named after the landmass. True. I think I think the cat. I think the capital of Zimbabwe should be the city of Zimbabwe. That way, that way, no one has to. Like, I don't have to listen to any more people be like, do you know the capital of Timbuktu? And I'm like, I don't know, Mexico is it Timbuktu? Was right. <laughs> Mexico yeah. Was right. yeah. Is the ca is the capital of Mexico, Mexico City? Yep. Really? I didn't know that. Look, we're be. already halfway there. Now let's just change all of them. Halfway, halfway Mexico. <laughs> and New York. Oh, there's, poten there's potentially more actually now I think about it, but I don't know. There's potato chips somewhere. I need to find them. It's a treasure hunt, you see. We call them we call them magic scrolls, Adrian. <laughs> Dude, speaking of which, I forgot, did you are you aware of the alchemy system in Oblivion? Uh Elder Scrolls? Yeah. No. I was watching. I'm watching a playthrough of someone play through it, and they found out that uh, all food qualifies as alchemical ingredients. So yeah, if you that combine makes sense. food, if you combine food together, it boosts your alchemy. So he's just going around buying all the food from all the bunch of, like innkeepers and combining it to make the worst sandwiches possible to boost his alchemy. So like, <laughs> he, he, made, he made like a grape and onion sandwich and it counted as like a <laughs> of, like restore fatigue. Did I, did I ever tell you guys about my dream XP system from like an open worldish type game like Skyrim or whatever? I want, I want an open worldish system where oh I still I still never found the thing for this. I should probably do that at some point. Um, I want an open worldish system where you get XP like everything gives you XP but exactly once. 
So like, sure, making a shitty sandwich would give you some XP and alchemy. But if you made a thousand shitty sandwiches, that's like, it just gives you nothing after that point. I think that would be a fun you can system. Only, you can only you can enjoy do. the flavor of something once. What Every about... single other time you taste is just garbage. Cause that's I, cause not I agree, what that means. I agree with the broad concept, but what what if instead it was diminishing returns where every time you did it after you got half the XP? And it, but infinitely? Yeah. <laughs> I, until, down until, to, until down to one to zero. down to one point. Yeah, because oh, yeah. practice is a thing. Practice is a thing. You know what? That does make that does make sense. Because like because like in my mind, the way that the system would work would be something. Did I ever go into this tree? I don't know. Um, the way in, in my mind, the way that the the way that it would work would be like imagine you fight a goblin, right? And it's like okay, you kill your first goblin, so you get XP for it. But then like uh, you remember in Persona Five, Grant, how like part of the part of like exploring the dungeon was figuring out what damage types the enemies were weak to yeah um every time you discover like a weakness for an enemy that's xp every time you figure out like oh this is where i can like counter their attack or whatever like like uh punch out where like when they're when they go to throw a punch if you hit them in the jaw at this exact moment it counters them that would also be xp but i i like adrian's addition of uh diminishing returns as opposed to just no returns i think that's good i think that's a good addition there you go. I feel like I I feel like I'm struggling here because I'm trying to I'm trying to follow what the game is telling me to do. You're trying to sniff to, what it's stepping in. I'm, I I don't know how to get there though. Like the little music going on. Never mind, it's gone. Oh, you yeah, ruined it. Fucking, <laughs> yeah, no. Back here, dude. The music. Uh, I don't really get there. The music was great. It was. Adrian, you know, the would main you mind theme, helping me out a little bit? And now it's all dead. Hang on, I'm doing a D and D right now. Do you want me to do it, Zach? As in, I'm plotting would, for a campaign. If you wouldn't soon. mind, I would I'm doing it. a D and D. Yeah. Uh, I can't talk right now. I'm making piss. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you could see. Uh, what are we looking for? Palace of Winds? Did we do that? We did that already. Uh, it, it should be after the Palace of Waters or whatever. Temple of Droplets? Sure. Temple uh, of the Droplets! I pissed on them. Have own. we done the Elemental Sanctuary? After completing that seems the Temple like what of we're Droplets, supposed to do. leave the temple and a ghost by the name of Gustav will appear. Yes, He presents did himself that. as former King of Hyrule. Okay, blah, blah, blah. First stop is at the Elemental Sanctuary. Play the Ocarina of Wind, quickly warp over to Hyrule Town. Did that. Run northward to Hyrule Castle Garden, where there's a quick goodie to collect. Slash away through the bushes, the southeast part of the garden. You'll find a secret lair. Climb down, find oh, a there's hidden dojo. A, okay, so it's in the so it's something in the garden. Tip throw to the tulips. Tip toe by the window. Yeah, run northward, Castle Garden. Oh, you like that? You like the jukes I did here? That was pretty sick. That was some of the Tokyo. Oh, yeah, look at that. I can, fit, I can, I can squeeze through this now. <laughs> pretty oh, sweet. Oh, what? Holy you crap. You have to stealth Lord. gameplay. Don't you like stealth mini games? Remember, this is a reference to Ocarina of Time because you never played it? <laughs> you never thing. played it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Remember the reference of the game you never played? Yeah, your favorite game, and Ocarina I never of Time. Will. Is this how I'm supposed to Damn. hide? Oh, fuck, dude. Your green Got clothes your didn't blend in enough. They should have. I actually <laughs> did genuinely think that it would help a little bit. No, that blonde ass hair poking oh out. Oh my god. It's so True. loud. Well, how am I supposed to. Oh, I guess, he goes, to... I guess he goes into that yeah. little alcove. You gotta there. use the combat roll to squeeze past quickly. To squeeze. Or to you just walk, I guess. your or way just walk, right I guess. in. 
Watch me swoosh right in. Swoosh, right in. swoosh. Right in. swoosh. No! Oh, I, th I thought he would go in a circle. None may enter. <laughs> I never, I never understood why these games, like, when you have Dude. stealth segments, why you couldn't just like fight them. Well, because theoretically the these guards. are good. Yeah, but I'll say theoretically these aren't bad guys. They're just people that are in my way. I guess. <laughs> but don't, isn't that how you deal with people in your way? I, I was I gonna say, say if you take them down, then you're the bad guy. I I'm, think. I'm, like I said, I, I'm playing Golden Sun recently, no! and. But they're in our way, Grant. There's a segment where I have to sneak into a bandit hideout, but like there's green oh cloak God, bandits and it. red cloak bandits, and the green cloak bandits that they see you, they'll just kick you out immediately, instantly, and then you're outside and you have to sneak in again. The red cloak bandits will fight you, and I'm like, wait, why don't you just fight all of them? Kill how, are, them how are these ones able to spontaneously get me out of the out of the base without fighting me? They spec into charisma. They like, they throw they throw an escape rope on you. It's it's explained very explicitly in lore that you and your party are some of the only people who have like magic. So I don't know. They're not magical. They're just dudes. Yeah, they're just dudes. never. No. <laughs> How? Hey, you. You, you didn't account Why? for wall hacks. You didn't account for the royal wall hacks. Yeah, clearly you didn't think about X-ray. Fucking Mario for two. Seen you got no clip. Shit. Why are you not better at the stealth thing, Zach? Damn. This game, this hasn't been a stealth game up to this point. <laughs> but Zach, aren't you supposed to know I how to do everything? I also don't understand exactly how, like, like, I don't, I, like, it's not, it, it doesn't feel like a vision cone exactly. It's a vision, like, something. I don't, I don't even know. Oh, oh he gotcha. <laughs> it's gotcha. a vision of the past. Semi Jack or something. Long ago. Foolish samurai. Long ago. Long ago. Foolish the samurai warrior. Foolish samurai sword with a foolish samurai warrior. <laughs> foolish, <laughs> foolish samurai. samurai. <laughs> I love. I love that one video where it's like the fractal of like him wielding the sword, wielding him wielding the sword. <laughs> wielding him the, with the sword, wielding him wielding the sword. It's so good. A foolish samurai. Oh shit. Oh shit. Easy. Nice. Not hard. One just okay. <laughs> oh, is this the secret path? This must be the secret path. But before Maybe. I can do that, I do have a secret thing over here. Oh, you know what else Locks we never right did? We never went there. back to that. Don't talk to um, him. Don't talk to him. <laughs> talk we, to never, him. we never went back to that, um, the, the combat master who was in the dark room. Oh yeah. I don't you know do where he I don't know now. where he is though. Combat mustard. Sword master. There's a bunch of sword masters that combine items with powers and sometimes conditions where you learn the, the low health bean. I want the max health bean too. Damn. The <laughs> snake didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Nice. Now we can kill the princess. Oh, Zach. Remember that? So you said you, you didn't go back to the one in the dark. You have to light the candles. Yeah. He's sword being guy. What, Max Health? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna go back right now? No, 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 no. You wanna stealth the game again? You wanna stealth? <laughs> no, I wasn't going back. I just wanna go through this room. Oh, this is right. the elemental sanctuary, isn't it? Yeah, no. What makes, <laughs> what you, makes you say that? <laughs> yeah. You don't know that. So. Fuck you. Who told you? Who told you? Who, who did it? I will say that uh, I'm just gonna recount. Actually, I don't know, Zach. Do you think we're ever gonna play Golden Sun on stream? I don't know. Slash maybe. care about spoilers. Not for okay, not for a long know. while. Okay. Hopefully, you'll forget that this at that point. But but there's a. There's a very there's a very old RPG section of that game that I thought was really funny where um you have to serve as guards in the ship because there's monsters, right? And um like there's three segments or no, there's four segments where after each segment one of the people rowing the boat went down and you have to assign one of the passengers on the ship to start rowing instead. And they all have different sprites and like obviously they're all different people. Um and 
the way that it works is that the, the 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 captain tells you, oh well, if you do have to pick a make sure it's balanced. Uh, however, if you make everyone on one side of the ship uh, really really strong and everyone on the other side really really weak, then you your ship goes off course and you go to optional uh, boss island, which I think is really nice. Oh, that's cool. It's really funny though, because one of the people that you can get to row is this like obviously infirm senile old man. <laughs> <laughs> Who's like, you're gonna make me fuck you! <laughs> oh, I like, forgot. This is ooh, after what's his face is impersonating Vati. the king. Yeah, that's why yeah. they're all on edge. Forgot about yeah. that. That was a while ago. He's, he's doing what to the guards? <laughs> Violating he's, them? Uh, I don't know. I don't think you were here for it. Great. Uh, but the evil sorcerer Vati, who is a literal child, uh, took over yeah. the king's body and is telling them to do bad things. I've read the manga. Oh, you have. Yeah, I actually have. <laughs> I thought Hello, you didn't know sir. anything about this game. I haven't played it. Oh, well, the manga follows the game pretty closely, I think. I don't believe coming. you. <laughs> I will say, I did read the manga. I like the manga. I like the Legend of Zelda manga. They're pretty good. They're, yeah, I like them. They They're were fun. my favorite literature as a child because I hated reading words and they were mostly pictures. Hell yeah. Is it you? It is you. You. Is it you? you. Soldier boy. Well, Dude, I like to imagine. Right here. So. I like to imagine that the Hyrule guard and like king is like totally unaware that this guy is squatting in their like yard. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't tell the king that I'm here. He doesn't know I dug this place out myself, and I am living in his front yard. I've been stealing swords from the guards for years. I've been stealing so they keep going missing, and I am the reason why. Yes. I've stolen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of them. <laughs> They're not cheap either. Swords are quite expensive. Please. This is all I have. I'm going to upcycle them. Do you want the cut? <laughs> But he upcycles the swords into something that's like objectively less useful. Like he, he upcycles them into like a quote unquote vintage chair. Yeah, like I make them into a sculpture. It's going to be a, a decorative centerpiece. It's called 12 swords glued together. <laughs> it's called 12 swords, comma, welded. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So we did that. Now what? It's called 12 swords uh, tied together using grass, grass, <laughs> also stolen from the royal courtyard. Da, 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 da. I'm going to weed lead. together. At this point, you can make your way over to the location that Gustav marked on your map. However, there are plenty of other goodies to collect. Most notably, there are several kinstone fusions that can now be available over at the Minish Woods. Uh... Minish Woods! I forgot you had the flippers, so I thought you were just gonna jump in there and drown. <laughs> <laughs> you just like you hear Kins if he's like, yep, okay. Uh once you're in the Minish Woods, blah blah blah, Minish Village. Which <laughs> is a really stupid thought. Could you imagine uh could you imagine the Terminator, right? But instead of lava it's just water and he's too heavy to swim. <laughs> he gives a final thumbs up anyways, and they're you like just, Dude. you just you just see him down there like slowly deactivating and rusting. I mean <laughs> Not to not to be that guy, but that is in JoJo. <laughs> oh, no. Are you to put the fucking up on that guy's wrist that he drowns in tar or something? Sorry. In JoJo, isn't there like a polyp that attaches some guy's wrist and he drowns it in tar, and then he's like, "I'm old, but I'm still smart." Oh, you're yeah, talking Joseph about Empress three. from Part Three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. not exactly what I was referring to. I was referring to Willy Wonka from Part Seven. Grant knows what I'm talking about. Roxanne. They straight up named a guy Willy Wonka. No, he just looks Whoa. explicitly like Willy Wonka. His stand is that. What was his stand again? It was like he if can... he curls into Infinite a ball. Chocolate. He can't get hurt. Yeah, if he if he curls into a ball, he becomes invincible to all damage. So it's a really difficult fight because it part seven is a horse race, and when your opponent is physically trying to shoot your horse in the head with a revolver, but you can't stop them from doing that, it gets pretty difficult. 
So they end up defeating the guy by what was it? It's like they jump over a canal and at the exact moment that his carriage is like over the canal, they set off dynamite. So he's forced to tuck into a ball and then he sinks to the bottom of the canal where he doesn't have any oxygen left in his lungs. And he's like, but okay, he well, I can't like the pressure of the water would kill me far earlier than I could make it to the surface. So all I got to do is just curl into a ball and wait, someone will probably find me. Right. And then the footnote at the bottom of the page Yikes. is, is like, nobody found him for thousands of years until eventually his mind went blank. <laughs> Which is, the, so which is the which is the third time that. I think is that the third or second time that Iraqi uses that as a punishment for a villain? Uh, he's definitely done it before. Uh, cars, so, yeah, cars, obviously being the big one. I can't remember. I was if he's thinking, done I was thinking Diablo, but I guess Diablo is different, right? Because he's just he's Diablo's... over he's overstimulated. Yeah, he he will never not be stimulated as he will thing. he will never not be stimulated because he he experienced like which like I know Diablo and I, now this is a tangent but like I know Diablo is a bad guy like obviously he's a he's you know a mob boss and he murders did he people but that? <laughs> yeah did he really deserve to experience a brand new and excruciating death after he dies every single time for the rest of eternity? Like, Dio probably deserved that more, but what did Dio get? Dio, Dio, Dio just kind of burned away in the sun. <laughs> Pucci deserves that, I'd say. Pucci but... and Dio both deserve that. They, they're, both of these anyone... motherfuckers tried to usurp God. Is Dio actually dead for good? No. Well, well yes, so. kind of. It, yeah, it, yes, it's, no. it's the nature of JoJo that it would be extremely easy to just write him being back alive for some bullshit reason and they kind of do that a couple of times um but nothing nothing like particularly egregious but you know dio is by it, well actually i was gonna say by far but funny valentine's a pretty compelling villain too yeah which is, which is objectively a good villain name funny valentine also a good name for a president the nap uh-huh uh, you take the napkin, Grant. Slugula! No, you take the moon, it's then squeezer. You take the sun. I saw Slugula. I got, I got a little overstimulated there. Oh, Slugula! Oh. oh, this is just straight up behind this other zone. Okay. Scourge, scourge. Fuck! What the wow. hell? Uh, apparently we're supposed to go to the Royal Valley. Is that where we are? I have literally no idea Did where I the world is. He just he just nudged me off the cliff. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Okay. He's got what a visitor. Heck? What was that? The doorbell. He's got a visitor. Ow. And that was the last we've ever saw. Oh, Grant. there you go. Okay. So Whoever that was, was at the for... door took him from us. Yes, we feel more in his that the, that the Grand Assassins finally caught up to him. Grand yes, Assassins. Yes, yes. Let us... <laughs> what is it? Be in silence for a few seconds? And then he died. Yeah. So, Zach. That's me. Think of an RPG. Uh, okay. Any, Does it make you sad yet? Why, why, would just, RPG, sad yet? why would RPGs make me sad? Because they're typically of the medieval fantasy genre. No, I mean, like, you, you seem to misunderstand like my generic disdain for, like, fantasy settings. It's because it's like... I don't know. Like, from my perspective, it's so well-defined, I guess, in that way. Like, like the classic D&D, &D, like, Lord of the Rings-esque fantasy setting is so well-defined that it might as well just be reality, too. Okay. So, like, that, like that's, that's my, like, that's my, that's my problem with it. I don't actually dislike it. I would just prefer something else. Sure. I guess that's a take. 
that's fair enough. But my point was, um, these games commonly have items that like permanently boost a stat, for example. Yes. Uh, if you had to think of items that permanently boosted like health, attack, defense, and like magic, what would they be? Uh, like like what would I what would I call the items? Yeah, because in Golden Sun there is nut, or sorry, there's hard nut, apple, cookie, and some other thing. Oh, so they're <laughs> so they're just food items. They're not specifically because the one that I always think of, and it's funny because it's a game that I haven't actually played myself. I just watched it a bunch when I was younger. Is uh, in Chrono Trigger, they're just called power tabs, and they're literally just like little. They're like they're just tums that you take and then they increase one of your four main stats by one point. And so that's why, that, I don't know, I always, when I when I think of stuff that like raises your base stats, I always think of something medical because that's what it is in Pokemon too, right? You have your calciums, your proteins, yeah, your and they're carbos. all in like these little pill bottles. So that's what I, that's okay. what I typically think of. But if you, had, if you had to design your own, what would you want them to be? Um, they would have to be special because I would assume that having something just raise your stat would probably be pretty unique and important. So right. I don't know. What would I call it? Um, <laughs> actually, you know, oh, fuck. I don't want to be here. So if, if I if I did have to do one, um, you know, rock candy. Yeah, I would nice. like a natural and extremely rare kind of crystal that you could just like rip out of the ground and chew on and by eating it you would gain your you would gain the stat or whatever and the stat would correspond to the color of the crystal okay well, that's interesting grant sabo do you have any ideas for this answer uh Man. mine would be similar to zach's but it's crystal meth oh, great yes. <laughs> just start, every, time you, every time there's a really long custom character like breaking it down with like taking a credit card and like <laughs> <laughs> Finding their fucking. I, just, uh, I was just reminded. Basically, the of them going on a bender. <laughs> yeah. Zack's answer is basically like Mario Galaxy, except like the colors actually actually matter. Um, does Mario Galaxy have stats? What do you mean? Not that. Like, oh, you're talking about you're talking about like, like the... star bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, sure. you know what? Start like because uh, the star bits are designed after that like Japanese candy or whatever. Uh, okay, that cool. inherently would be fantastic as like an upgrade thing. Fantastic. Star bits are cool. I'm thinking of Frank West. What do you think of Frank West? Adam West. <laughs> I was about Frank to say West Adam or... West. Who would win, Frank West or Adam West? Uh... In what? He's covered yeah. wars and he's covered wars, wars, you know, and the other one is an actor. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a toss up. Uh, who, Bruce Wayne, who? who? I'm pretty sure Adam West is Batman. That's true. It's That's just, I've, I've been saying that for years. Could you imagine showing like the new Robert Pattinson uh, nope. Batman movie and, sh <laughs> and showing that to like a Batman fan? From like the from like the seventies. Did you see? Why, uh, is, this, Digital why is this woman like... playing Batman? <laughs> Corridor Digital did a whole thing for the Robert Pattinson uh, Batman trailer, but replaced him with uh, you know Adam West Batman, and it's oh, fantastic. Pretty good. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. I think, like, I think that would be a really funny take, and I know that Batman is not necessarily supposed to be funny per se. Although my favorite depiction of Batman is in Batman: Brave and the Bold, but um, fantastic depiction. But oh, like, it, but it would genuinely, it would genuinely be funny for there to be a silly like 1970s Batman in a modern day grim dark setting. Absolutely. I think that'd be I think that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. 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 So Frank West says when you get a good picture. Can I actually can I actually do something for a second? No. Sure. Um, Wait, what have you been doing so far then? Uh with permission. Grant, would it be okay? Like, I'm gonna like mute audio to stream. Grant, would it be okay if I called you for a second? 
Okay. We're having a secret conversation, guys. Ooh. Yeah, I feel unincluded. This is... I thought you meant phone call, and then I was like, I was looking at my phone, and then I wasn't expecting this. What's that? What's going on? Sure. Uh oh. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't blame you. That's I'm I'm really sorry that happened. Jesus Christ. I like, what do you even do? As aside from, like, move out, right? But that's obviously, yeah, I know. Right, but your dad's not there. Right. Mm hmm
Have you talked to your dad about this? Right. not how to deal with that <laughs> mm. I do remember that, yeah. And then the videos. Ah, oh, Jesus. This is, about, this is about the vacation. Uh, yeah, you told me her reaction. Hmm. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> nothing set out the way it's supposed to be, of course, but geez, fuck. Um, to tell someone. Low energy. Uh, this is all muted, right, on stream?
just can't remember what it was. We're back. Zach had to share his uh, OnlyFans that I was inquiring about earlier, so. <laughs> no, no, uh, bastard. What was no, one, no, one else, no one else is privy to this information. Yeah, so uh -huh. I was just going through the absolute deluge of uh, posts that he's made. <laughs> it's all just fucking... It's it's all just hair. It's it's just close-ups <laughs> of hair. Yeah, like but like microscopic close-ups of hair. What it's do you mean, cells. like 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 so? <laughs> like like it's, it's like, like it's science only fans, like only scientists, only science. I was helping Adrian with his game. Yeah, Sava uh, actually helped me solve a puzzle in this game that I uh, yeah. forgot I had abilities that could help me solve a puzzle. Oh, that's cool. Okay, let's look, that was let's pretty look at funny. This shit. Okay, so there's a switch here, obviously. I'm playing an optional dungeon in this game. It gives you secrets because uh, it's op optional. An op dungeon? I yeah. love those. Opt dungeon. Op dungeon. Okay. Op dungeon is my favorite dudes. workout routine. Op oh, dungeon is my favorite rival manga to one of my favorite mangas. Oh, Dun uh, Dungeon, Dungeon Meshi. Meshi. <laughs> yeah. I had to think about it for a second. It's I was a, like, it's, it's a, not in the same position in the word, but he probably means this. It's a manga where the monsters eat the humans, which seems pretty normal. <laughs> which is pretty normal, actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Dude, I, I don't know how, how to, I don't know how to get to this fucking area. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of going crazy. Figuring out. I'm working okay. on it. It's just gonna. Bingo. I don't know. I just feel like this shouldn't be a puzzle. Like getting to this area shouldn't be a puzzle. Well, it is. So eat that shite. Damn. Okay. <laughs> How do I? Ow. We oh, Royal Valley. Valley. Story of my life. Yeah. Okay, I mean, like, so look, I... this is Royal <laughs> Valley, but like, I can't go nowhere. Uh, the thing says... Oh, wait, no, no, no. You, uh, we, now we can. Remember the place with the big block that you tried to push with two links but couldn't? Uh, was that over here? I don't remember. I, I will look for it. Dude, God you just lost you. so much money. What the fuck? I mean, I literally have infinite money, so I'm not really worried about it. Oh, yeah, because you can just cheat at that. What do you mean game? cheating? Gambling. It's called strategy. Uh -huh. I, there is a dice game in Golden Sun that I also cheated, just get a shitload of money as well, so... It's really nice to just not have to worry about this stuff. You know, if I could just, like, quick save and quick load at a gambling parlor, I would be a lot happier. I, I, I imagine <laughs> a lot of people would be, yes. I almost, like, um... Uh, <laughs> my least favorite part of Bloodborne, and the reason why I never finished Bloodborne, because, fucking, I love Souls-likes obviously um and i like souls like combat but the the uh i didn't finish bloodborne because i fucking hated having to grind out blood vials it sucked <laughs> but you gotta get the true end grinding also. how do i get oh shit i have how to the get fuck that do one I get to that place <laughs> was it this one no, this was just led to I this, burst. right? Oh, never mind. There's a thing there. What is that? Hello, critter. Who could it be now? Maybe if you spend some mysterious shells, you get the figurine and learn what the name was. So I think what I'm going to do, actually, is that... Or um, so, so my hope... Uh, never mind. It's not here. Damn uh, it. My hope is that we will finish this game this weekend. So right before we get to the final boss, assuming that the game still lets me, what I'm what I'm planning on doing is going to the shop uh, to get like to spend the mysterious shells. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use auto clicker because auto clicker has a setting where it will track the position and clicks of your mouse. And so I'm gonna have an on-screen keyboard <laughs> and just program oh, in nice. the sequence to like you know go through the whole rigmarole. Thank you, mm. Grant. I appreciate that. Um, to okay. go through the whole rigmarole and then just have it autoplay like 6,000 times or whatever. God damn. I think it's a genius idea. Uh, okay, I think I know where that is because that's like here and then up here. 
I'm there you befuddled go. by a puzzle currently. I'm really a puzzle. It's just I'm lost. <laughs> no, me. I'm playing Golden uh, Sun. There's a puzzle in this game that I have to solve. Who plays Golden, Golden Sun? Fun. Me. Oh. I think I solved it, though. Yeah, this should do it. I'm trying to get all the optional shit. Adrian's How the only motherfucker that I know who will reminisce about a game that he thoroughly enjoyed from his childhood for like an hour and a half and then go and play it. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't actually beat this game nor did I get very far because I thought it was too hard and too grindy, but I, I found out I have much more patience now that I'm not working. That's good. Uh, do you guys have any games that you never finished that you like regret and would like to go back to finish? Golden Sun. So, I mean, you're doing that now. Uh, do you golden. really want to finish Persona 5? When you I say think... regret, no, you can uh, go ahead, please. Oh, uh, I was going to say, I think I'm going to buy the Switch version because that is Persona 5 Royal. Which does apparently fix, fix a lot of the issues that we had with that final segment, but it also with the introduced way game. more issues. So yeah, I'm gonna buy the Switch version, I think, but and we'll we'll see after the hundreds of hours I spend in it. I decline. Well, I don't want no. I don't want any more arrows. Is Persona good? Uh fuck! What a question. Um, uh play until like you think you're you think the game is gonna be done and then stop so, up until there <laughs> phenomenal he he, <laughs> he he has an excellent point because like when i you have lied to me no what did i do damn i did i wasn't even reading <laughs> evidently yes so uh but yeah so like when i played persona 5 originally um, there's a, there's like a, there's like a dungeon. I thought it was the final dungeon of the game. And I had so thoroughly enjoyed my experience up to that point that I genuinely didn't want the experience to end. So I literally just never finished that dungeon. Like I got halfway through it and just stopped. And then, you know, a couple of years later, Grant's playing it and, you know, me and him are in his room just like I'm watching him just play. And Grant gets, not only does he get past that dungeon, he gets past the next dungeon and then the next dungeon and then fucking three hours of overworld shit and then the next dungeon and then there's the final secret super dungeon at the end and it's like, holy shit, dude, this game and doesn't fucking stop. And you're not allowed... Stop any breaks in between <laughs> it's like no no save points that's the part that fucking baffles me about persona 5 it's like oh you can only save at certain locations so play until you think you're gonna be done and then stop and you'll have a fantastic time it's a really good game up until that point <laughs> hmm. is my grandfather's name Smee? is it adrian what Never mind. What's your grandpappy's name? Safe state. You lying <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Milari of Mount Cornell has seven apprentices, does he not? I don't fucking know, sure. That's Cap, damn it. The Blabbernut gives one the ability to understand Minish, does it not? I mean, it gives you the ability to speak Minish too, but sure. What the fuck? You, son of a bitch. you have lied to me. <laughs> you have lied. No, I, I was just wrong. Fucking, <laughs> I don't even fucking use arrows. Yet here you are. The robe of the current king of Hyrule is white. No? You have lied yeah, to me. Yeah, I'm about to say it's red. You have lied to me. <laughs> He's such a faithful memory. Oh, Zach deserves this. <laughs> Diplomacy Jesus. has failed. Diplomacy has failed. God, I really hope Diplomacy has failed sticks around on stream ban uh, on like stream commons for a while. Cause fucking for for a playthrough that got literally no attention and no fanfare, god damn do I love fucking Wonderful 101. It was a real fun game. <laughs> it's really fun. I also like Diplomacy has failed. Diplomacy has failed! Diplomacy has failed! It's the... It, it, it's the... It, it's kind of the equivalent joke to, um... 
Hey Grant, let's do let's yeah. do a little bit of improv role play. All right. Oh boy. Um, you need to renew your license at the DMV, and I'm the person behind the counter. Okay. All right. Hi, so, I'm I'm yeah. here to uh, renew my license. Um, unfortunately, you're standing in the wrong line. You need to be in line number three. DMV appointee Zach wants to battle. God damn it. I just want my license. Go Rattata. Go Rattata. He's like, you need to have some nonsense on you at all times. Oh my god. I keep that motherfucking thing on me. But, but right. fucking uh, di diplomacy. Oh my god, it's fucking Mystic Wood. It's fucking Mystic Magic Woods. Damn it. Yay. Um. But yeah, like I don't know. It feel like it's the exact same thing with uh, diplomacy has failed. Up. Okay, I'm just cutting you. it off with a Pokemon battle. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's like because it's like um. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are arguing about something and <laughs> it just goes what the fuck it just tells you stupid <laughs> um <laughs> it's like it's like uh it's like you're in a job interview grant and uh I'm the person or like I'm in a job interview and you're the person who's interviewing me all right you ready yeah okay you, you so, begin uh, Okay, so uh, what would you say makes you qualified for this job? Well, uh, I think I have uh, excellent communication skills and uh, um, diplomacy and title. Giant, giant fists appear and I start fighting you. Uh -uh. <laughs> Same as the beginning was up. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Fucking. We're we're at the God. end of a playthrough, <laughs> trying to trying to decide what we're gonna be playing next on stream. <laughs> and Saba's like, I think we should play Prince of Persia, and I'm like, I think uh. we should play some indie bullshit. And then no one says anything. And it's just the whole failed. <laughs> Start the fight. Same as two, but I don't fucking know. It was two before this? Left. It was right, it was right and then up. It was up. Oh, fucking look just... at that. I'm a god. Finally. We've made it. We've made it to this graveyard. Town. Why is this the Valley of Kings? <laughs> this should be here. the Valley of fucking dead people. Damn. More like the Valley of Stinks, you know what I'm saying? More. <laughs> Looks like Phoenix Wright was Phoenix stupid. Phoenix Objection! Stupid. He may fall me. He may fall me. me. God, I know we talked about it before or whatever, but like, it, it's so weird to me. Maybe it's just because the type of humor doesn't necessarily like of the volume of jokes in that <laughs> video. Fucking like seventy percent of them fucking kill me every it's time really and then the other 30 percent, i am stone-faced making jury duty <laughs> See, jury. i hate the jury duty i hate that joke so much it's not that funny. Well, as you can tell, me and Grant have great taste and we love that joke. <laughs> Clearly superior sense of humor. The, 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 one that, the one that gets me, <laughs> and I'm embarrassed to admit that it gets me, is the fucking, um, after, <laughs> after, oh, hey, it's Dampy. Dampy. Um, or Domp. Domp, damn. Domp, hey. But, um, the one that gets me is, uh, after Edgeworth has already established that he wants some of that dank clown pussy. Uh, yes. the, the witness gets up on the stand and he's like, well, I was a little bit of a class clown. And then Edgeworth goes, go. <laughs> yeah, like the no. class is really big. I so thought it good. was for the uh, the bus full of school children I set on fire. Just <laughs> shut the fuck up. It's good too. Um, 
Oh, Grant, did you did you watch uh, Legend of PP? The <laughs> what? Legend of PP. Oh my God, you haven't. We have to stop stream and watch the entire thing again, right? <laughs> I mean, Damn. I could. <laughs> that what the fuck is up with that crow? What a what a dick ass. Hey, Dampy. Figure this room out. Now I have now I have to go chase down this fucking bird. Now you've got to kill him. Fuck it. Ah. Murder him. I've been working on it. Did I Annihilate do I actually have to hit him, him or do I have to just find him a certain number of times? Are we in the royal? No, wait. Uh, this is the, the royal uh, valley. Royal. This is the royal phallus. This is the nice. royal rat authority. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Dampy, speak with Dampy. A Takuri is the name of the bird. Steal the That's graveyard key. Taco. It's a taco. The taco <laughs> will fly off and land on top of nearby trees. <laughs> walk around, but don't get too close. If you do get close, it will fly off to a different tree. Instead, once you have it in sight, dash into the tree. Ah. If you maybe, you know, wear a sombrero and like, I don't think it'll be able to detect you. I think you can just nice. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, that's hat. why. That's why <laughs> Enzlo says uh, charge after that bird instead of something normal like chase after that bird. Use the Pegasus boots after that bird. <laughs> We're good. Hello. Who are charge you? after that Boyd. Boyd. I'm not even talking to this fucking ghost, dude. Spooked her, but it spooked her. I like spooked her. Spooked her. Spookter is, yeah, is Spookter is what used to happen whenever Janine annoyed me. I would <laughs> I would wait until she forgot Spookter. about something and then I would just go ah! <laughs> Wow. Same. <laughs> but she didn't annoy me. I would just do it. I I, <laughs> I wish that I wish that I had that video of um fucking I, I don't remember exactly who it was that did it. But it was, I think it was Lawrence and Janine. Uh, fucking, I was, I had just gotten out of the shower. So I was like walking out of the room in the apartment. <laughs> and Janine was in front of me, just going like, boo. And I was like, haha, very funny, Janine. I, it, it, that's not very good. And I go to like walk out a little bit. And Lawrence was under the desk. And Lawrence goes, boo. And I go, ah! <laughs> like screaming on the top of my phone. <laughs> Oh, that one was very good. That was very funny. Good times. Oh, that's what it wants me to do. Okay, well, I'll do that in a... I'll do that in a second. I would, what would be... What would be the most inopportune time for an impromptu Pokemon battle? Colonoscopy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but it has to... But you have to start with a <laughs> phrase. So what would the phrase be? All right, so you're gonna start feeling the. Uh, <laughs> we put the. What the you're gonna be like, this will only hurt a little bit. All uh, right, you'll the, feel. The you'll feel you a sleep. You'll feel a slight oh God, tug dude. on your insides. No, 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 <laughs> dude. <laughs> Dude, the it's in the hospital and the and the doctor's like, I just hold my hand, push, push, push. Oh no! Wait, are you fighting the baby? No! Oh, God damn it, Grant! I was just about to springboard into that joke of it being like, it's a, it's a boy. Double battle. <laughs> newborn it's a double battle. eight, new newborn Maxwell wants to battle. Oh my god. He fights with baby Pokemon. <laughs> I think you gotta go around the bottom. I'm working on it. That's not the bottom, Zach. That oh, that, that, that oh. He's got me there. What are you. Silver Rune, what are you talking about? Saba's a certified doctor. 100%. Oh, fuck. Don't I canceled know. it instead of rolling. Don't you know, uh, I was a certified doctor. She broke her own ankle. Y yeah, that's basically <laughs> something along those lines, yeah. Pretty sick. I tripped. Oh, maybe we're, I we're the ankle foot. We are still. by far the most trustworthy medical physicians on Twitch. 
Uh huh. Think about yeah. that. Seems probable. I believe it. <laughs> oh no! How am I supposed to fight these guys? We're in the royal crypt. Oh, they just take damage. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. They're, they're excuse me. Those. He was just giving you a little hug. Try using the lantern on them so they burn away. Can you do that? It'll scare the raps you off. You can do that in other Zelda games. Oh, there he just go. turns into a skeleton. Yes. Jack Skellington. He burned off his fingers. I burned off his fingertips. And since he is dead, he... Now they're a different yeah. fight of enemy. <clears throat> that was a sentence. Don't pay attention to it. <laughs> okay. So, Grant, slight update. Remember Dude. how I told you about the new Legends Rune Tower expansion and how I was a little disappointed that it seemed like it was like a couple of the champions were just keyword soup? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I continuously forget that keyword soup is ex like astonishingly powerful. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> it keeps the, going. Both of the keyword soup champions are fucking top tier, and the one who is not, and I found genuinely interesting mechanically, is like C tier. Jesus. And I'm like, fuck, dude. Oh, Jesus. Gotcha. <laughs> it definitely, definitely caught me lacking because I was not paying attention. That's fun though. I like, I like, I like, I like trick ghost houses. Is that based on anything? Do we it's know? It's pretty based. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty based. Thanks, Grant. <laughs> now I'm just thinking of that. <laughs> I mean, pretty it's baseless. like Sun Tzu said, all warfare is based. True. That's... Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Sun Tzu. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get on the thing, man. <sighs> thing, man. By the way, you missed my uh, contribution to the topic, Zach, uh, that Adrian was asking about, and he said I, my idea was pretty good. Oh yeah. Was what good. was the what was the thing? The is, is this the. This is the like what, permanent what, upgrades. What, what, yeah, that one. Yeah. What did so, you say? Just can tell about it. Yeah, I was about to. Sorry, I was taking. I had to look at something. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, you know, uh, Asada just wanted us to know that Adrian thought sh she did a good job. Yeah, basically that. And then I don't need to share it because there was left nothing us. else. Because you left us, and like I can only be brilliant once. Okay. Listen, I, I it was for something important. I I had to get that URL link. You know. Dude, yeah, the only fans. The, the fucking snakes just charged at me. Basically, I well, said snakes were charging at me, Zach. Let me tell you. <laughs> Anyways. What <laughs> depends what type of snake? But yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like. Like I said I want it to be sandwiches and that every little independent element of the sandwich can like be a different stat boost and then you just make the sandwich and it's whatever mixture of the stats you chose. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Also, ham you could potentially... You strength yeah. up and then ham and cheese will give you strength and defense or something. And then if you panini the sandwich, you get like a, I don't know, an extra boost in something as Is well. Is panini the one where you like... <laughs> Press it and in between the hot yeah. surfaces. We had, a, yeah. we had a panini press. In well, we didn't. Noah did. <laughs> Noah was there when I was living with you guys. Yeah, you lived with us when Noah was there. <laughs> that was that did was no, Noah. That no one, was Noah's panini press. <laughs> did Noah not let you use it? No, he let me use it quite frequently. I was gonna say because I used. It. I don't know why he wasn't very possessive over it. So I mean, we were all able to use it. Well, I mean, like, actually, I guess, I guess the, the reason why I, I guess the reason why I said that in my mind was because he took it when he left. So it wasn't oh, yeah. ours. It was his. Right. You guys just got free reign of it until he left. <laughs> Were you jealous? I, I genuinely the Panini Press was a much greater investment than I would have initially anticipated in terms of like the amount of value that is added simply by warming up, slightly toasting, and compressing a sandwich. Dude, that thing Fair. made fuck that thing made grilled cheeses in like ten seconds. It was awesome. 
Oh yeah, that's yeah. That, I mean, that's that's the beauty of it. And then when Zach and I were living together, we had my lame toaster. Did we have I'm sure it wasn't that bad. It, it wasn't. I like I don't, it. I don't. I don't remember your toaster. You know what? I, yeah, you know. You know, free. like genuinely on bagels. beyond just like you know enjoying like hanging out and watching like TV shows and stuff together. You know the thing, despite it happening only like I think once. The thing that I remember the most vividly is you fucking cracking open a tin can of fucking uh, <laughs> of tuna and just the entire house smelled like ass for like days. It wasn't that bad. I, I could listen. definitely smell it like a day or two later. <laughs> I'd be eating tuna. <laughs> and the thing was, was that there was obviously no genuine problem with it, but it did just kind of take me off guard where it's like, holy shit, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> like I was in like I was in my room just like I don't know reading or watching something on my phone and suddenly I'm like oh god something's fucking punching fuck? my nasal cavity. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's like like it, <laughs> that's why i don't remember meeting greg that's my because the fucking shock from the tuna fish was like no other grant memory it, it, <laughs> you it get evaporated this memory. your memory <laughs> yeah. oh uh, my god <laughs> but uh but grant I, I i do i do genuinely regret the 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 fact that uh we're not able to like watch ben 10 uh together now that i'm like making my way through the show because damn dude that show's fun it's just dude, fuck fun yeah. ben 10 is sick as hell and it's really weird because like I didn't think that I was like that much of a Ben 10 mark, but then like fucking every episode, like as I'm watching it, I'm like, it, it feels like I'm clairvoyant because it's like that, like right before the next thing happens, my brain's like, oh, this is going to happen. And I'm like, <laughs> I guess I did watch this a lot when I was younger, because I even told you when I heard the theme song for the first time, I had like a fucking panic attack because I was like, holy shit, how do I know this so well? <laughs> like, how is this triggering so many memories? Dude, fucking Ben 10's awesome. Ben 10 is very good. Ben 10 came out in 2005. That is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't they make a bunch of shitty remakes of it though? No. Well, they made I mean, they made a shitty remake. Yeah, a shitty remake. Because the two fall uh, two or three? No, three follow-up shows three follow -up. Up are apparently all pretty good. Yeah. Then they were accepting one of them. them no, then the like the 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 most recent reboot is bad. Like like just a shitty cash grab. In fact, I think it's made by the same. I think it's made by the same animation studio that they uh, hawked off the Powerpuff Girls remake to. That makes sense. You remember? You remember how in the the new Powerpuff Girls re uh, 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 reboot, they straight up, <laughs> they straight up miscolored uh, all three of the Powerpuff Girls in one episode. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and it's just like, that's kind of important. Yeah, I think I think that's important to get the colors of the characters right. Maybe who's to say who's to say hello. Yay, I got so Slugula. Many. We'll get it later. Slugula. Slugula. And excuse me, his name is Squeezer. You're not gonna go upstairs. I, well, I want to see what was out here. Oh, oh man. I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> you got <laughs> absolutely fucking mullered by me. Discombobulate. Discombobulate. Oh, yeah. So now that I'm not watching The Amazing World of Gumball anymore, um... I will say that a, a portion about that show that I totally forgot is that they really like memes are great right like everybody acknowledges that memes are a pretty good thing for the most part but it it's shocking to me just how frequently the amazing world of gumball would integrate memes and like you know recent happenstance into the plot of their episodes like there was one episode where um 
Gumball was convinced that this random girl was trying to take advantage of Anais uh, by, you know, doing whatever. And the way he goes to, sh uh, to like, prove his point is he's like, yeah, you know, parasitic friends where they act all nice and kind for a little while, and then eventually they just fuse with your skull and tap into your brainstem. And as he's doing this, he's fusing with Gumball's head, or uh, with Darwin's head, but he turns into a clicker from fucking uh, The Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> like just straight God. up and, and like and like and, and when uh and when Anais is, is like looking at him like what the hell is that he's like oh sorry I got it from a video game and I'm like wait a Damn. minute you can you just do that <laughs> I guess you can I guess there's nothing stopping you but it's kind of weird <clears throat> goodbye Damn. slaughter they call me sergeant lauder Oh, congrats on the promotion. Actually a demotion. It was after I it was <laughs> oh, after yeah. I killed that pokey thing. Oh, they, were like, no. they were like, that's a civilian. You can't do that. Oh no. Non-combatant. Nope. You know what? Maybe I should go back to that uh, other staircase because it seems like maybe it wasn't actual progress. I think it was just the a bonus the thing. Secret room, yeah. Maybe I should go back and look at that. A bit of secret. But if it's fucking, I have no, I, I, I have nothing to spend rupees on. Please. Thinking about Please permanent not. upgrades again. I was thinking about what, like I, I often have like small ideas that might work for a game but might not and i don't really have the patience or the time to like test them to see but i was thinking about a i was thinking about like a tile based like action rpg where you play as a vampire and uh, the whole idea is that you only have two buttons slash and lunge but if you lunge at a if you lunge at an enemy who's uh like reeling from damage you instead like grapple them you like grab onto them and if you then slap like if you then so like while grappled if you hit lunge again you'll fucking huck them across like you know the room but if you hit slash you bite them instead and now that adrian brought up this like interesting idea of like permanent upgrades i'm now thinking like ooh, it'd be kind of cool if like the first time you suck the blood from a unique enemy type if it gave you like a permanent stat upgrade like rewarding you for your uh ingenuity and being thorough are you just giving up on the puzzle <laughs> well i don't have enough people i need four do you yeah oh, Th shit. those were huge those were huge stones damn it I'll, I'll do it just to prove just to prove it maybe but because i saw four i saw four panels right Oh, you might be right then. Excuse me, sirs. All right. He's just uh, trimming the air. I knew he would come back up. Nope, shit. No, he's right. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> And without oh, you wouldn't have gotten the 100 Jesus. mysterious shells for Slugula! God. Oh yeah, dude. Listen, if you spend 100 shells on Slugula, you have a 100% chance to maybe get Slugula. <laughs> True. Uh, I you know, you know that's what we're going to have to do eventually. Something. Wait, how the fuck do I get out of here now? I like those odds. Figure it out. Finger it out. Finger. Figure. Figaro. Figaro, figaro. figaro, figaro. Because these are organized in that order. You have fast travel, don't you? I mean, I I, I, forget, I would rather not, but sure, I guess. What a musician. What a musician. Ah. Link is always so good with an ocarina. Link. Which is really just a weird flute, to be quite frank. Aren't all woodwinds just weird flutes? Uh, <laughs> well, a flute's not a woodwind, first off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... An ocarina is. An ocarina's not either. No. An, uh, a woodwind needs to have a reed, like a saxophone or a clarinet. 
I don't know. I don't know what flutes and ocarinas are, but I know they're not woodwinds. Just because an ocarina is made out of good, can be made out of wood, I don't think that makes it a woodwind. Pretty sure it does. I'm pretty Listen, sure that's I, how I've, that works. I've, I've seen a music once. I've seen a music. Seen a music. Yeah. <laughs> it's the craziest shit. Oh, this fucking thing. I totally ignored it a second. Oh, damn it. Where, where? You could have. <laughs> ah, ah, I, was, I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's a neat thing. And then I just went back down because that's right when you and I were like, oh, maybe, maybe I should go back. <laughs> damn it. God damn You'll it. I hate these fucking happen. things too. Why doesn't Ganon just hire a million of these things? They're apparently immune to damage. He should. It's fake. Damn it. It's fake. Haha. Uh oh. No. no. <laughs> Why didn't you no. go around? Because I was trying to, but totally it's hard to move. Use. Easy. No. I made money from that, technically, I think. <laughs> I don't know you even out. <laughs> no, no, right, but like I maxed out, but the crystal that he gave me, I think, was a hundred? It was a large blue, right? So it's a hundred? It was green, and I don't know. I thought it was a large blue, which is worth a hundred, but he only took 50 from me. How much... <laughs> if you had an enemy type in a game, where the enemy type was like, hey, give me any amount of money and there'll be a 50% chance that I spit out twice as much money. What percentage <laughs> of your overall wealth do you feed to that creature? <laughs> the gambler's fallacy, no. Because I would, because I would straight up, I would straight up give 50% <laughs> of, of everything that I had. But what if you don't get anything? Well, then it's fine, you know, I like, you know. No, but you could get double, dude. Well, bro, bro, you don't <laughs> go, understand, go bro. Go 100%. <laughs> yeah, I just I mean, give you it are all. wrong. If I did go 100%, I would double my money. fuck is that? Is that the... What the fuck Onion. is that? Who knows? It's moving around and wobbling, though, so... Big garlic. He is wobbler. Some kind of vortex. Yay. Holy shit. Oh, oh wow. these are the bird We're people. We're in the clouds. Am I still alive? Head in the cloud. Ezlo's like, why the fuck do you walk toward it? We could have died. <laughs> Dude, I genuinely... I, I think that's one of my favorite tropes from, I guess specifically Nintendo games, because I, I can't really think of a lot of other game franchises that use this, but like the thing where you can like walk around on clouds, I guess like Adventure Time does. Like it's probably used a lot in other places, but I can't really think of anything because they use it all the time in Mario. They're using it here in, you know, Zelda. They also use it in a uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Yes. If you, for anybody who played the red and blue rescue team, the one of the, the final Sephiroth, dungeons, yeah. one of the final dungeons is uh, the sky pillar, which is literally a enormous fucking tower comprised entirely out of clouds. It's pretty and that shit's fucking hype. It is very hype. Hey, Adrian, you remember the part of red rescue team where <laughs> The 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 objective is to find the sky pillar so that way you can beseech Rayquaza to like save everybody's life from a giant meteor and then you yeah. fail because you can't find it and everybody in town gets really fucking sad for a while because it's like oh shit we're all gonna die yeah it's pretty dark <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> fucking horrifying especially for a young Zach it's very dark. Well. Because it's like, it's not even just that, it's not even just that it's horrifying, oh, it's also the, the fact that, like, the game straight up tells you, you failed. Like, you failed to do this thing that you needed <laughs> you to do. You have doomed everyone. Everyone will die now. Oh, are these diggable? It's your fault. Hey. 
And so the world I, I actually Pokemon do I actually perished. do legitimately think that one of the characters blames you for it, even if you talk to them in town. I think you it's uh I think it's too. Gengar's team, whatever they're called, team actually I believe Gengar's team is literally called Team Meanie. You are correct. Team <laughs> Meanie. By the way, Grant, uh, I don't know if you're familiar Grant. with uh, Red and Blue Rescue Team, but do you want to take a wild guess who the other two members of... Uh, oh, fuck. Who the other two members of um, Team Mini are beyond Gengar? It's Tyranitar and Alakazam, is it? No, that's, no. Team, that's Team Ace, I think? I think it's Team Gold. I don't know. No, no, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely not Gold. But uh, I think I believe it's Team Ace, and there was supposed to apparently it was supposed to be like a fucking acronym pun, but then it didn't translate to English, so they were just like, ah, fuck it, just call them Ace, like they're really good. Call them the best. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, so Team Mini are the bad guys, right, Grant? So uh, for no particular ACT, reason, by the way, close. Sorry, they're called ACT, by the way. ACT. Al Kazam. Alakazam, Charizard, Charizard Tyranitar. Thank you. So it was an acronym, but it was uh, ACT. Thank you. Thank you, Silverune. Uh, there so, you go. Um, what? I just said that. Well, Silverune also said it. So oh, I said thank okay. you, Silverune. So to well, be fair, Silverune is cheap. 14 seconds behind. Yeah, but I'm here. <laughs> 14 <laughs> seconds ahead. <laughs> um, no, sorry. What, uh, what was I saying? The... Um, do I have the thing for this? I do. Hey! Yes! Um. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, so Grant, uh, give me a wild guess what you think the two, the two other members of Team Meanie, what do you think their types are? Types? Is it poison? <laughs> One of them? Gengar is a poison type. Well, oh, Gengar yeah, is ghost is. poison, so yeah. Um, but poison. not only are you correct, poison. Grant, uh, both members of Team Meezy are just poison type. It's Ekans and Coughing, I believe. No, 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 never mind. It's Ekans and Metacham, which I remember the being Metacham. really weird because say, yeah. there was a because there was a theory within the community that that's the same Metacham who shows up in Team Charm. What the fuck? Because <laughs> there's like, there's like, what is Metacham doing? It is a very strange like, pick. Well, because apparently there's like a one off line where she talks about like having a criminal past or something, or, or like a past that she wasn't proud of or something. And so people are like, oh, well, the end, uh, in the end of Red and Blue Rescue Team, uh, Team Meanie is reformed. Like they're good guys now, or at least they're less bad. And so it's like I don't know if it I don't know if it's real I don't know if it's canon but I super believe it. Yeah. Met up with Lopany and uh, Gardevoir. Well, because Lopany and Gardevoir are like old friends, like they've known each other for a long time, and Metacham was the new one of the group. I will say that. Fucking Jesus. Maybe Holy crap. You may think Please. initially Mercy. that in Team Meanies, uh, Metacham is a weirdo now, but actually, Ekans is the only one that's not fully evolved. That, yeah, well, why, for a why, different why reason, he's, the odd, he, he's a different odd one out, I guess. So so they're all kind of misfits. It's kind of it's kind of weird to me uh, that like because because they you know sometimes Pokemon does interesting things narratively with like typing and whatnot, and it's interesting to me that. Like, Metacham has double, like, just from a pure type standpoint, Metacham has a double disadvantage against Gengar, because Metacham is psychic fighting, and fighting cannot hit Ghost, and Ghost is super effective against psychic. True. So there's like, so there's like a double, there's like a double disadvantage for Metacham but in that, in that, Metacham in that matchup. Metacham can kick his ass. Well, anybody kicks Atkins' ass, to be quite frank. Who's <laughs> Atkins? Just swing him around. Wait, is this fucking Locky too? There yes. Is. I need, he's, he's I literally need one Mario. Help. Oh, uh, I, I saw someone mention in a server that I'm in that they like when characters, when there's like art or like, uh, like little side videos or clips or whatever of characters, like, 
like that are in a story, but as if but as if they're actors or they're like on break or in a director's chair, like eating snacks at a table or something. Yeah, that's really because like, oh, it, yeah, it, like it gives a, it gives a, it gives a level of charm which I don't necessarily want to see all the time. But like, you remember the old, you remember like old Pixar? They would have outtakes during the credits. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like, man, that's such a cool thing to do because it's like obviously not real, but it, I don't know, it gave like a little, like whenever Woody like flubbed a line at the end of Toy Story One, I was just like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's nice. Can I make this go away? <laughs> just jiggling cloud. Stop it. Do you have a wind thing, perhaps? Will yeah, but it doesn't. Well, Get I mean, it, I guess it didn't affect the one up there, but maybe it'll affect this one. I don't know. I'm playing Golden Sun, you see. Golden Sun, a ton of fun. Oh, well, there you go. Got him. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? The meaning? The memeing. Oh my god. Big Boss, his meme. Alright. Lads, what should I have for food today? Uh, um, Something with calories. True. I'm not on keto, so I can't do that. Why are you on mm. keto? I said I'm not. Why are you doing Get off that? keto. Are you on paleo? <laughs> I'm not on dinosaur, no. Damn. I don't, think that, we're, I don't think there are any dinosaurs in the Paleolithic era. I think that's very explicitly a time where dinosaurs did not exist. Okay, well, too bad. You. Well, because like, the whole there. reason it's called Paleo is because it's supposed to emulate like the diet of a caveman. Sorry. Zach, I can think of a, re of a time period where there's the dinosaur and Paleo. Your mom. <laughs> God. <laughs> that was earned. <laughs> That was not. Um, that was an Aaron's joke. Uh, no. Uh... <laughs> I like. I like. I like you. I like you crowbarring it in there, though. So well, sometimes I gotta, I gotta you gotta do it for the joke. You gotta do it for the Duke. You gotta do, do you, the Duke. Do you think that? Okay. Did Brian David Gilbert get hired by College Humor? Do we actually know if that's the case or not? No, it's not. It's not. He just visited and did like a bunch of stuff for a little bit. Yeah. Same yeah, with the uh, Eric Because like, I, like I know, I know that fucking um, <clears throat> excuse me. Because I know that <laughs> fucking uh, uh, the fucking what was the show Unraveled? I know that Unraveled like took a lot. <laughs> out of him and the crew when they made it at Polygon, but god damn, I want more. <laughs> Sadly, we'll never get it. We won't. That's the consumerism. That's the consumerism talking, so... I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily consumerism. It's just like, this was a good thing that you did. I would like to see more. I don't know. Is that really consumerism? You are consuming, therefore it is consumerist, much like how if you're fascist and you're fashing. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> when you have fashion. It... Yeah, you are therefore you're... a fascist. <laughs> yeah, so therefore... <clears throat> what the fuck did I get across? Did I... How did I do this before? Can I, can I jump to that? Oh, I can. Cool. So, I'm gonna propose four items, and I want you to tell me which stat you think each of them boosts. The apple? The cookie, the hard nut, and the mint. Can we get what the stats are, or you want us to guess the stats too? There's there's HP, attack, defense, and speed. The mint is speed. I'm gonna say the apple is health. Hard nut is probably defense. What was the wait? But the cookie? cookie. What the fuck is the cookie? Attack. No, or that doesn't make that doesn't make no fucking sense. The the item cookie. for the, the 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 food stuff for attack should be like a fucking bell pepper or something. <laughs> Can bell meal. pepper be speed? Why would a bell pepper Why be speed? Why would bell pepper be speed? Oh, you're right. That's not spicy. Bell peppers are sweet. Oh shit! You know what? You're right. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I forgot. There's yeah. two more items. There's... I was I was absolutely oh. I was absolutely thinking that bell peppers were spicy, but you're right. They are not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, need to, I need to amend myself. There's two more items and two more stats. There's the lucky pepper and power bread. 
And there is the luck <laughs> stat. Bread. And the eight, there is the, power there is bread the luck is health, stat. If I've ever heard yeah, of it. Yeah, well, I would say so I wonder if the PP. lucky pepper has to do with luck. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> That'd be hilarious That's if it possible. didn't. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, there's um, so there's HP, PP, which is magic stuff, attack, defense, and speed. What was the other one of other than the lucky pepper? Uh, power bread. Power, power bread. bread is attack. Power bread feels like attack, yeah. Power bread could be attack, but then does that mean that cookie is magic? I could see that. Yeah, cookies are magic. Agreed. Cookies are magic, true. Yeah. Right. Everything about that statement makes sense. It feels are, you, right. are you ready for me to read down the list? Hit us yes. with it. So the apple boosts attack. That's what the, fuck? what the fuck are you talking about? It's to fend off all those doctors. Oh shit, the, you're right. Oh yeah, true. The cookie boosts PP. So Matt, whoever said magic okay, was so right there. Okay. Cookies, cookies are magic. The hard nut is defense. Yep, okay. we got that one okay. too. The, yeah, that the lucky sense. pepper is luck. Sure. The mint is agility. Speed. Which is speed. And power bread boosts your HP total. That's fucking oh, bullshit. I mean, okay. I feel like I guess. that should be flipped. I feel like power bread should be the attack. strength attack, and then apple should be health. It's I agree. I agree. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Remake the game, Adrian. Change those. Mod it real <laughs> Good quick. Idea. Yeah. Mod it so that way this makes more logical sense to me. Yeah, this is solely for me. I'm sure the like translators would agree with you. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually quite funny because I know that in previous designs that I've done, I've enjoyed putting luck as a stat that can be manipulated. But the more I think about it, and, and like the more that I try to implement it into whatever I'm designing, the more I realize that I don't like luck as a stat. I like luck as a resource. You know what I mean? I like there being some sort of mechanic in which like being unlucky results in you gaining. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Lack oh my God. No, I'm so you sorry. I didn't him. realize I could do that. Um, Jesus Christ, landlord Zach there we over go. here. That's the real evil evil. Yeah. Evil evil being a landlord. God. The, um... But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really like the idea of... Because, because uh, what's the name of that game? There's a game that's set... It's like Desperado or something like that, where the idea is that you don't have HP, you have luck. And the idea is that when an enemy shoots at you, you know how in you know how in XCOM there's that really frustrating thing where it can be a 99% accuracy shot despite like literally despite your character pointing point blank in their face there's a 1% chance that you'll miss or whatever um in I believe it's Desperado instead of having health you have a luck system and the idea is that depending on how accurate their shot is it reduces your luck from 100% down to that much and then you can increase your luck by like doing stuff during your turn like you know hiding behind cover or you know doing whatever but when your luck hits zero if a shot if a shot would take your luck to zero you just get shot and you get a wound if you get two wounds over the course of a fight your character is incapacitated and if they get two more wounds while incapacitated during that fight they're dead forever and I think that's great I think that's a fantastic system because if you know, I think that you remember in Epithet Erased Grant when like they get shot by a revolver, <laughs> at, like a couple characters, and they and take like, like Ow. yeah, they take like six points of damage from a fucking police revolver. <laughs> 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 and that just that, that just like I don't know, like that's just crazy to me. It's like it's a fucking bullet, dude. <laughs> Ghost trick. I know you haven't finished reading the DMG, but there is a point where it says HP is an abstraction that includes things like luck. Oh, does it say that? Yes, it says that HP is not just your physical health, but also includes uh, abstract things like luck and narrative importance. So the 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 first off, that's going to be really hard for me to wrap my head around for the time being. I did actually finish the Dungeon Master's Guide, but I kind of I kind of skimmed through some stuff, maybe. But That's the fair. um, 
but uh one of the things that i was reading on like a on the D, D subreddit that i really enjoyed it was like one of the top posts of all time i think was um somebody being like if a character with a really high stat rolls low stop making them seem incompetent by just like fucking up instead make it so that a circumstance that they couldn't possibly have anticipated occurs so like for example if a character has extremely high i don't know what the i guess it would just be stealth but if a character has an extremely high stealth but they roll a nat one instead of making it that they accidentally knock over a garbage can or something make it that uh a cat sees them from like up on a windowsill and like meows really loudly to alert the guards and i'm like i think that's great i i like that's that way cool. more i like the idea of not making somebody's character feel pathetic <laughs> <laughs> yeah i try to whenever i'm dming uh kind of a little bit brush past if i can well Okay, I, I do this when there's like a lot of shit going on. There's like 20 combats in a combat and each speech person has a turn uh, and I want to get through it. But I'll try to brush past player failure if I can. And then I spend more time describing their successes because I think that's funner. I mean, people want to succeed, right? So it makes sense. It's kind of like what I was telling you before, like from a game design perspective, the vast majority of players want to see positive numbers going up as opposed to seeing literally anything go down so like instead of subtracting one point from one player maybe you would consider at giving everybody else one point instead because like the amount of disappointment that 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 person feels for just not receiving the point is vastly less than if they actually were like physically removed <laughs> from one of their points Oh, uh, did I talk about, um, there's a, speaking of gaining numbers and that going up, did I talk about the plane of positive energy in Pathfinder? Because that's a system I actually think is really funny. The plane uh, of positive energy? So, no. in that system, there's uh, good, evil, chaos, and law, but there's also positive and negative. Positive means giving things life, negative means things die. Um... And there's a corresponding plane of existence where everything is full of life all the time and the entire plane is just fused with life. To the point where, if you are a mortal from the plane, from the material plane, and you go to the plane of positive energy, you just are constantly gaining hit points. But there is a point where it is dangerous because if you gain too many, it starts flowing into temporary hit points. And if that pool of temp mm -hmm. HP exceeds your normal HP max, you explode in life. <laughs> That's your body awesome. can't Wait, but you, you don't die so though, great. right? Uh, your body stops existing and your mind evaporates and you just your life force joins everything else in the plane Damn, you become one with everything. That's 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 pretty good. I like that There's there's enemies that can you can find trail plane that are from there that have the same concept where they don't They don't harm you. They just heal you until your body can't handle it anymore That's great. I enjoy that over heal and then there's obviously a negative plane where they just kill you dead. Could you imagine that, forest. Grant, if in Legends of Runeterra, if you had a uh, fucking Sanguine Blade, the one that allows you to overheal for a shield, and, like, your shield just stacks <laughs> infinitely, but if your shield exceeds your health bar, you just fucking die. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> fucking Master Yi would insta-kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> Master Yi would Q once and just explode <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> The way of Wuju. Ah! <laughs> the way of Wuju lives. Ah! <laughs> oh god. Fucking Samira would cast her ultimate. She would go. <laughs> <laughs> the just visual of that is really funny. Oh god. I know that. I know that Riot hasn't done one in a while. They haven't done like a proper ass April Fools joke. But like, like the last one that they did was. Uh, fucking earth mode but man that would be so funny where it's just like all right every item now has some extra bullshit it's like every item is now crazy ridiculously strong but with a huge drawback <laughs> <laughs> fucking dead man's plate you know how like it gives you like speed and then when you 
charge yeah, up to full strength moving. you do like super huge damage imagine a version of dead man's plate where that bonus stacks near infinitely where like your movement speed and damage goes up by like an Ramus. enormous amount but yeah like Ram like ramus hecarim style but um but the problem is is that you can't actually auto attack anybody unless you're dead so like oh my god <laughs> so like so like you have to be in the auto attack animation as somebody kills you <laughs> to get the damage i was gonna say you can't turn <laughs> or you, oh my god you just go in a straight line <laughs> i actually uh, i don't know if you remember that from a while ago but like back when riot was first going through and like updating champions i remember i had like a bunch of ideas for like oh this is how i would update this champion so on and so forth and that was actually my ideal for malphite was that because Malphite's passive right now is kind of boring. It's just like a shield that he gets every shield, once in a yeah. while. And I was like, well, what if on one of his abilities, one of his abilities had a passive where it's like, if you move in a straight line, you build up speed and you gain stacks of momentum. And then you can expend all stacks of momentum in order to increase the stun duration on your ultimate. Oh. Because you know how like Warwick's, you know how like Warwick's ultimate, like the range increases the faster he is. I was thinking the same yeah, thing for Malphite, where like Malphite's ultimate would gain distance based on how much momentum you had. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Now <laughs> Malphite versus Scion, <laughs> ultimate battle. <laughs> Unstoppable force versus immovable <laughs> objects. Literally. Was isn't that isn't that the name of uh isn't that the name of his ult? Unstoppable force. No, no. Uh, well, well, because uh, that's Malphite's, right? Is unstoppable force. But what, what um, is uh, what is Scion's ultimate? Isn't it immovable object or something? Uh, let me look it up. Scion. I just remember. Cowards! Cowards! <laughs> somebody, somebody in league. Hey, hey this is the guy's way. house. Uh, unstoppable onslaught. Oh, unstoppable onslaught. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I, I could have sworn there was a person in... The, I, I could have sworn there was a champion in League who has an ability called Immovable Force. Because I know that... I know that... Um, What's his... What's his name? Freaking... Braum has... Uh, like, unbreakable something. His shield, right? Uh, his E? Yeah, the one where he throws up the shield. What is that called? Yeah. Brom abilities. Don't go to the fandom wiki. Because I know you don't have ad block. <laughs> um, it's called unbreakable. Just unbreakable. Okay. Yeah. There has to be, there has to be somebody who has an ability called immovable object. There must be. There, there has must, to be. There must be. Oh, it's you. Somebody. Him. Him. So Grant, did I, um, cause I know that you are similar to me in that you enjoy League's lore vastly more than its gameplay. Did I tell you what the lore behind the new champion is? I hope it's fun. Dude, straight up, it's incredible. It's an actual legend. Like within the context of the world, her character is like literally a like folktale legend sort of thing. The, the over oh, under yeah. is that I think her name is Namira. I'm going to call her Namira for the purposes of what we're talking about. From but Skyrim. there was a person prior to Namira who existed and she was like a bookworm, right? She was super into like myths and legends and shit. And the land that she came from had this like really big legend, kind of like how Christianity has like the legend of Jesus. Their, their like region had the legend of this great Maybe. warrior. Yeah, PP. Of oh, PP. Legend of PP. PP. Uh, where the, the over under is that uh, their culture has uh, seven, re no, sorry, five really powerful demons, where each one represents like a different aspect of, you know, whatever. Like the demons represent excess, 
not necessarily good or evil they represent too much of something so the the biggest and most powerful of uh these demons was joy where like not only joy does he unbound. want people to laugh and sing and dance but he also wants them to experience like ecstasy and he's like constantly like gorging himself on anything he defines delicious and stuff like that he is a being of pure joy uh, yeah, Joy Unbound. And so the, the over-under of her lore is that whoever the person was, like the bookworm, she discovers by cross-referencing a bunch of legends that the, the tomb in which that demon was locked away is underneath the capital city in which she lives. And so she goes with a satchel over her shoulder and a book under her arm and just goes into the ancient catacombs beneath the city and fucking disappears for 10 years. Oh God. And then once she comes out, she's like kind of the same person. Like it looks like that bookworm, but she's way different. She's super muscular now, just like fit overall. And Fantastic. she keeps referring to herself as Namira, which is not her original name. And she has like all these like fucking crazy superpowers and shit. And she's, she's, it's weird because she's kind of like a superhero in that she's like saving people in Bilgewater from like sea monsters and stuff. You see that in her trailer and whatnot. Like she's saving people from monsters because she is getting joy from the appreciation that people give her as a hero. But at the same time, she cannot stop, period. She must oh, always no. be doing heroic shit or else she starts getting like antsy and makes problems to solve. Jeez. And it's like, it's this really fascinating thing where it's like, ooh, I love the idea of demons just representing something good, but too much, you know? <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. I think she's really cool. And I was very happy with her trailer. And finally, League has made a good champion. Again. It, uh, like, like go go to a list of, like, recent champions, like, champions sorted by, like, date released. And when was the last time that a good one came out? <laughs> uh, list of all champions by release date. Samir is pretty okay. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, hold on. Legends, champions. Hey, do... uh, release date. Because Belveth is a non starter. Renata Glask. Renata, Zary, Renata, Renata Glask is so weird. It's like <laughs> her, her champion should make sense and be fun, but it, I don't know. I personally don't find it that fun. It's like, all right, I'm going to support you purely by forcing you to fight <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> Zeri, who I forgot about. Vex. Vex is fine. Vex is okay. I, li I like Vex. Oh, Z Zeri is a really weird one because Zeri seemed to really be made in order to do like a simultaneous release with uh, fucking Valorant. Okay. Because Valorant oh. released a, because uh, Valorant has heroes similar to like Overwatch and stuff, and Valorant had uh, a hero release that was essentially just futuristic Zeri, and I thought it was very strange. Because <laughs> it's like Zeri's uh... whole deal is that she's supposed to like represent like, oh, this is what a first-person shooter character would feel like in League, and I'm like, that's gross. <laughs> I don't like it. That makes my Akshan's skin crawl good. a little bit. Sorry? Uh, Gwen, Akshan. I'm fucking, I Akshan neat. sucks. <laughs> I, I think he's neat. I like his design. His design uh, is like, his design is half okay. And I've, and I've been saying for a really long time that League needs like a Robin Hood type character, right? Like that was like a character archetype that they had been missing. But I don't know, like not only was Akshan's like incorporation into the lore really subpar in my opinion, but he, I don't know. He like uh, I guess you would know this if you don't like play League per se. But uh, he's also like a really weak champ. <laughs> what are you talking about? Scion ult, Chem Dragon, Guardian Angel, Akshan ult, <laughs> or Scion passive, I guess. He just doesn't die. It's it's so it's so free. Anywho, <laughs> uh, I think the last one that is cool was Set. Set is fucking sick. <laughs> Set's Set so is cool. the boss. 
I like Gwen Gwen is fine. It's just that her her like whole scissors mechanic is kind of strange. I've also gotta get going. Oh that's true. It's like 906. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Goodbye. Grant. It's nice having you. How do I get to the roof, dude? Oh you Good wait question. no, this is a different person. Will you get out of my way? Who are you? I always thought these people looked like tentacles. They do, kinda. You know, you know a fact about one of my most beloved movies of all time that I learned the other day that makes me really upset? What's that? Um, Indiana Jones, objectively a great movie series. Just that the fourth one is like pretty lackluster and the second one's really weird. Um there is a there is a there's a there's a factoid that gets glossed over in the first movie because they really don't dwell upon it. But after a little bit of critical thought, there's a plot point in the first movie where Indy finds a old flame of his, right? Like someone that he dated and was intimate with in a previous period of time when he was a professor um and she's like really pissed at him for you know <laughs> for for tap for tapping and then leaving um but when you put the timelines together and figure out because she is like the long and the short of it is that she had been out of college for like six years and indy's class is for sophomores in college or whatever something or other the, the long and the short of it is that you put all this stuff together and uh, Indiana was 20 years old when he uh, had uh, sex with a 15 year old Marion. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I remember reading this somewhere and I was like, huh, good thing I don't give a shit. I mean, I do give a shit because I really like Indiana Jones, like the movie series, but now it's just like, damn it, it recolors one of my favorite characters in fiction as truly a piece of shit yes and that's sad <laughs> which not to be too poignant about it is also something that happens in jojo <laughs> cool joseph joseph joe star wait wasn't she a college sophomore not a high school sophomore you'll you'll forgive me i probably fucked up a lot of the times and whatever's it was something like she was in like an extracurricular thing working at the whatever the the long and the short of it was that he was 20 she was 15 and that and that is a fact like wholesale that that i can confirm 100 percent i can't believe we're finally getting the wind the wind element Okay, so uh, due to my Please. current injury, I'm going to just leave a little bit earlier in order to. Okay. Do regular stuff that now takes me longer time. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. All right. Well, yeah. I wish you the best. Will we see you tomorrow? Yeah. Dude, I mean, look at the fucking ground beneath us. Is nice because all I need to do is sit and, and talk. So. <laughs> so yeah. That's true. Okay. Fucking, see you later. I hate these things. Bye. Bye. Oh, I gotta bomb this, I guess. Have you ever heard of the, um... The little math equation that you're theoretically supposed to do to determine whether or not someone's too young for you to date? Yeah, and I don't give a shit about, yeah. like, remembering all that fucking math, because that's too much. I mean, it's literally, like, two steps. I don't fucking remember any of these variables and numbers and causes or whatever. That's it's... Mm -hmm. I think it's half your age rounded down as long as it's above 18. Sure. So like if uh, you're 40 years old, the youngest person that you're supposed to date. No, no, sorry. It's half your age rounded down plus seven. That's what it is. See, I don't, I'm not gonna remember a fucking 
seven or whatever. <laughs> I, mean, is a, I mean, I don't necessarily expect this to be a problem for you. Hopefully you would, you know, know the age of the person that you're dating. But yeah, of course I do. Yeah, but, but for most people, it's not really that much of concern. But it's, it's really something that came into not exactly public consciousness per se, but like something that became a lot more popularized when an enormous number of like actors were remarrying people who were like 30 years younger than them but it's just the sort of thing where it's like i don't know man you're like 65 and you're dating somebody who's like 18 Listen, and that's kind of creepy zach you're not gonna run into this problem if you just do it like i do and only date centenarians <laughs> you mean it's a, c centenarians for somebody who's 100 years old yeah you don't have to worry about anything weird there yeah i mean you just, probably uh, have to worry totally about fine. a lot more to be quite frank Nah, it's very easy. It's very easy, he says. Listen, Jesus. you'd be surprised how, how many of them are like... Uh... Are and that's just all they say. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many of them just go... Uh, and then Can die. you activate those with the boomerang? Probably, but... I mean... Save some arrows? I have a billion arrows. I don't use them for anything. <laughs> True. I gotta make the I I, but you I could got, be using them for even less. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, like like from my perspective, I use the arrows so infrequently, but I just got a fucking goddess upgrade, so it's like I probably should use them in some capacity. Mm. May have. Oh no! Yes, I did yes. it. Yes. Yes. Oh! Oh, you got him. oh, that poor skeleton. What do you mean? You were so scared of him first, and now you're like, oh, that poor guy. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, you know, just because he's bad doesn't mean he doesn't deserve a little bit of sympathy, I think. That was a that was an extremely unfortunate and hilarious way to die, I think. Can you imagine you lunge after the adventure and then the floor there, he, he dodges and the floor that he was standing on just turns into like a gap into the space. <laughs> like, oh shit. Oh, uh, slight update because I've been trying to keep myself sane at work. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to last at this job, to be quite frank. It's a lot more, it's a, like, despite the fact that the job is work from home, uh, I find myself dreading <laughs> every single moment of every day and i'm like i don't think that this is healthy for like my mental state <laughs> like overall so anyway but uh in order to try to keep myself sane as you know i've been working on like you know just tabletop campaign stuff just trying to have fun um and last week i mentioned the pokemon mystery dungeon D, &D companion guide um mm -hmm. after a more thorough review of the companion guide um and just like people you know and people just like talking about it from like a couple years ago and stuff like that uh apparently it's really bad like it's just it's just wildly imbalanced Shit. wow um who would have thought Fivey homebrew <laughs> hey man you know like i don't necessarily blame somebody for being a little over enthusiastic with their homebrew but apparent like apparently it's like apparently it's like bad enough to be like unplayable I mean, this is the thing, is that, like, yeah, 5e is super easy to homebrew. Isn't it super easy to homebrew well? Yeah, I can, I, I'm starting to pick up on that, because it's, like, like, because uh, cause that was, like, the whole thing, was that I was really excited to for the concept of doing, like, a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon campaign, right? But, fucking, it's real hard to just kind of, like, guess these numbers that you're supposed to pick and whatnot, where it's just, like, okay. Like, like, like let me give you an example, right? Um... Scratch is a weird thing to have as an ability, right? The the ability to scratch somebody should be dependent on whether or not your character has claws or something like that. So I'm trying to figure out like, okay, how do I translate Scratch from Pokemon into uh, like a tabletop setting without it being like crazy overpowered? And the solution that they had in the companion guide was like, oh, just pretend like it's a fucking uh, dagger, like just slashing at somebody with a dagger. And I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense. But apparently there's like, 
apparently there's a lot of like mechanics that go into like disarming people and stuff like that and the long and the short of it was that apparently it just doesn't work very well there you go <laughs> i was gonna say that the, the logic seems sound there i don't know where you go wrong with that unless you're applying like class abilities that involve attacks that don't mesh well with daggers well because keep reason. in mind that like pokemon has like this whole type advantage system and like you can i don't know it was it was the sort of thing where like oh hey oh you hold it to jump higher okay oh you got rock tape finally i finally got the rock feather it's it's the cape it's not a feather right but it's based on the rock feather something right, from a cape in this game <laughs> which is which admittedly is a lot better and a lot cooler yeah exactly now you can jump good well well <laughs> oh! <laughs> damn it like apparently making flamethrower from pokemon Apparently making Flamethrower from Pokemon just uh, Dragon's Breath is kind of OP, according to the people on the forum. I don't know if you have an opinion on that, or, or if you would have, a, or if you would have an ability it. to speak up on that. I mean, yeah, it depends on how often you can use it and what level you cast it at. I don't remember the spell. I don't remember the spell level of being able to do it. I would have to look that up. If it's if you're saying that you get it an amount of time equal to like the PP in the base game at like max level for your for what level you are, so half your level rounded up, then that would be insane, yes. Okay. <laughs> there's a there's a similar spell called Agonizer Scorcher, which would function a lot more like how it does, because Dragon's Breath in 5e can function as a line or cone of a bunch of different types of spells. Presumably. Line or dragon. cone? Yes. How do you I guess you just pick? It depends on which dragon you're trying to emulate. Ah, oh, okay. But uh, Agonizer Scorcher, which is a similar spell, uh, is only a line of fire, but it's a slightly better line of fire than the Dragon's Breath one, uh, because you can't choose a different element or shape. So it's a slightly more special in the room. That would just be a lot more like Flamethrower in my mind. Okay. You know, really? I mean, I guess this is part of, like, the process, right? The fact that it's like, okay, I really want to do this, like, homebrew shit. And it's like, okay, well, then sit down and do it, right? But it's just like... Oh. <laughs> my brain my brain now just wants to, like, come in tomorrow with, like, a list of, like, okay, here are all the abilities that are going to be in the campaign. What, what, how would this translate from D and D? What can I, I just, I what can I just use and reflavor so that way it feels more like Pokemon instead of D and D? I will say I just double checked my own. Uh, Dragon Breath is only a cone in Fiery, which is I said that because it's not only a cone in Pathfinder and it's more accurate to actual dragons, but this is just cone breath, I guess. Like Dragon Breath Fiery emulates a few of the dragons and then dragon fire emulates not just the cone and line but also represents uh imperial and primordial dragons too who have funky breath types where they some of them breathe like a ball in a range that explodes in a radius instead of a I, line or a cone. I breathe a corkscrew flame breath just and it misses everybody <laughs> mechanically that will just be a line um for sure no, 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 it zigzags, because you know how, like, a lot of people, like, like I think most commonly, D&D &D is depicted on, like, a square grid. It goes, yeah. it goes, zoop, 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 <laughs> back and forth. Oh, my God, dude. There's, um, <laughs> there's a class in PF2E called Inventor, and one of their abilities is uh, Megavolt, <laughs> where you just shoot a beam of electricity, and you can upgrade called Gigavolt, where it shoots the full beam, but then every time it's a wall, you can choose a direction that it bounces off and use the remaining length of it. So normally you hit the wall, it just ends, but instead you can, you can like ch continue its length up to its full length, just bouncing off walls repeatedly, which I think is really cool. Bouncing off, do you get to pick the angle? Yeah, and every time it bounces off, oh, you get to pick the angle that bounces. Insane. <laughs> Granted, it is, the thing with Inventor in that system is that they have a bunch of uh, op, like, a bunch of their abilities have the unstable tag where you can upgrade them, but they have a chance to backfire where you can't use unstable again or else you will just explode your invention and not be able to use most of them. It's like there's a risk factor to it. Is there a... Is there a thing I'm supposed to do here exactly? Maybe try Sprinter Tracker with your fucking phone. On what? This? Oh! Oh! 
Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I, I can't believe that I didn't end uh, like <laughs> me, the guy who just likes mashing the swing button. I didn't end up actually like swinging at any of those things. Yeah. There you go. Uh, shit. What do I? Knock do? Him off. Oh, can't knock. I'm gonna flip him. I'm gonna give him a little flip. There, there you go. go. Okay, that wasn't that bad. I am at like pretty low health though. Don't you have three fairies? Two fairies, but yeah. Did you die already or did you use them? I died early? once, yeah. Oh. There's a strong gale. And hold on to your hat because it's me. <laughs> That's good. I'm the hat. The volley scale is now ready. I hope that after like two or three more Zelda games, I will be I will be able to appreciate Breath of the Wild. Let me tell you, as someone who's played a good chunk of Zelda games and then Breath of the Wilds, and if you have the same opinion I do, I don't know if it'll change that much. Well, because like there are like there are some fundamental parts of Breath of the Wild that I just really don't appreciate. Like it's like it seems to have a sincere lack of regard for like explicit rewards. There's a lot of stuff in the game which is supposed to just be like, oh, you're supposed to just feel good about being able to do this thing. You know, like, oh, you made it to the top of this mountain. Isn't that cool? Yes. Like, like how like many, that. like how many fucking Korok seeds do you have to get in order to get that fucking golden shit? And it's like, uh, I don't even I don't think the golden shit has about. an explicit use, does it? I got no idea what you're talking about. I didn't get that far because I didn't have the patience. I was like, I need the game to actually reward me with a reward, not just a sense of satisfaction. If I wanted, I would just fuck, fucking go <laughs> jack off, I guess. I'm not here to jack off. I'm here to play Zelda. Uh, I, I I think I share a couple sentiments to you do, but I might even have more fish troll than you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm thinking about it, and it's just like a lot of the stuff where, like, I don't know, like this is where, like, I kind of wish Grant was here just so that way he could be he could be a more you defend reasonable. This game. Well, not even defend it, but just like he has a much more even keel like perspective on like how he perceived the game, where like he looked at the game and he was like, "Ooh, I want to explore every corner of the map." And I'm kind of like that, too. Like, I like filling out the corners of the map, but not if there's no reason to go there or, or like no explicit reason to go there. Because like uh, when I I think I said this before, but like when I played Breath of the Wild, um, I didn't experience any of the Zelda cutscenes, like any of the stuff where it's like a flashback to your past. I didn't experience any of that shit because all of that shit is supposed to be stuff that you like inherently go out to go find. And that's supposed to be like part of the idea behind the game is that it's like, oh, go and, you know, go and explore the world and who knows what you could find. But the thing is, is that, are you okay? I pressed the wrong button. I was trying oh, to I click on the Discord. Oh, I thought you deafened yourself, and, it, and I was like, oh, it's it it. I was accident, so I'm okay. deafened. Um, but yeah, and, and it's just like, there is so, like, the, the one that got me is that relatively early on, like, the thing that set the mood way too succinctly, super early on, was that they have the classic uh, treasure hidden behind the waterfall, right? Um, right. And behind that waterfall is always the same fire sword, if I remember correctly. It's just like a sword with fire enchantment on it. And I remember being like, dude, fucking sick. And then like, it's not even just the fact that like things have durability. It's the fact that you burn through durability so fucking quickly. I think I went on to fight like three groups of the fucking little goblin creatures. Uh, whatever bacoblins whatever they're called um i went to fight three groups of them and then my sword snapped and i was like what the fuck <laughs> that's not yeah. a reward <laughs> you gave me a, you gave me a paper mache sword and said that that was you know worth it and it's just like and, and you know and i tell this to grant and grant's like well yeah that's to make sure that you're using new weapons as they come up and i was like i want one weapon yes. you know like I want, is... I want a weapon of each type that is like cool and good, and that I can upgrade, so I feel like I'm making progress. 
the, wow, it's, you know that thing you're describing, they play that in multiple Zelda games, actually, that aren't Breath of the Wild, and it's pretty good. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying, like, we're here now, and I'm like, dude, this is a, I'm having a genuinely excellent time here in Minish Cap, and it's, you know, I'm getting explicit rewards for the things that I'm trying to do, and I feel really good about that. Um, yeah. I don't know how I'm supposed to proceed from here, so I'm gonna try blind this. Jump. No, no, blind jump. Well, I tried two blind jumps already, and it didn't go super well. Fair enough. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna try this. Who knows? Maybe this will work. Hell oh. yeah, I'm a genius. You're a genie. I'm a genie. What the fuck? How do I do this? Oh. You stomped it hard enough. Oh, just go high enough. Understood. One of these wait, is wait, a white light, light. Careful. I was gonna say there he is. The, the odd one out. The fucking obvious red one. Although it would have been hilarious if it if they had the red one, um, and then the green one was like like. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay. Go more under it. It's it's nope. just go straight under it. So it links under it. Yeah, right here, right? Or is yeah, it like perspective where it's like here? No, it's not perspective. Ah, it's just, there you got go. Got it. Understood. You were going where you should have, where it should have let you go, but you weren't going where it actually lets you go. Like that. There okay. you go. Got it. Got it. You know, from a once again, from a gameplay perspective, that makes a lot of sense. You were thinking too hard. I was thinking with perspective, and it's like, well, that would be annoying for most people, so that's fair. Yeah. What else can I shit on Breath of the Wild for? Breath of the Wild also has the thing where, like... I, I mean, I've already talked before about, like, how much I... Like, my general and severe disdain for um, physics puzzles. So, the fact that the game relies super Bro, heavily... I hate those. I hate those. I hate those. I hate <laughs> just physics, physics puzzles. puzzles in general. Um, yes. And they so, it's like, besides the... Besides... <sighs> <laughs> Damn it, I had to go back down. Uh -huh. uh, warp, warp. And see, you know, the, the game already has like a difficult initiating point for me because I don't like physics puzzles. But you know, I can I can get around that because some of some of the physics puzzles were genuinely like fun um, and were done in like pretty unique and clever ways. But I don't know, there was also it was also just the thing where it was just like you don't really get up oh, fucking Jesus. You don't really get upgrades in Breath of the Wild. I think the only like tangible upgrades that you get are sure your health and stamina bar go up, but you know, who really cares? Like the like um I don't once again, I don't know about you, but the only reason I got any health upgrades or I felt obligated to get any health upgrades was so that way I could get the master sword. Yes, exactly. You get what 13 or 17 and then I just stop caring about health. Because it's like, well, I'll just not, I'll just not take damage, you know. Like exactly. I'll just, I'll just do better at not taking damage. And like, apparently there are these shrines that you can do around the environment, which you can sacrifice your health upgrade for an equivalent, um, for an equivalent, uh, fuck, Jesus, ah, for an equivalent stamina upgrade. And it's like, I mean, stamina is important. Like stamina is really cool and important. But I didn't find a lot of the stamina gameplay to be super intriguing. You know, like you, you, you know, like you know what it is. I want a button or some sort of gameplay element that determines whether or not I successfully climb up this hill, as opposed to my stamina bar just kind of depleting over time. You know what I mean? The most interesting thing I got in stamina was when I'm trying to climb this tower and there's a bunch of enemies trying to hit me and if I spend stamina I can dash try to dodge them better. But also, it's kind of just annoying most of the time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And like, you know, we already we already acknowledge this, but I do wish Grant was here to like defend Breath of the Wild in a way. Because it's like, it's one of the highest rated video games of all time. So there is clearly something there. It's just, I just don't see it. Like, I can see why people would enjoy it, because there's there's so much, like, self-expression you can do in terms of, like, puzzle solving and just, like, systemic interactions that I genuinely adore. But at the same time, it also just has so many problems. <laughs> I think I will forever enjoy watching speedruns of that game more than actually playing the games. I can see that, yeah. That's, that's, the, the, that's like, a fair assessment, I would find. 
the jank in the speedruns is funny, but when you play it's like, wow, I don't want to experience jank, I want to experience the gameplay that's good. Ooh. I don't know which way I'm supposed to go. Can I go that way? I, I would assume I could. Maybe. Nope. Guess not. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, um... I don't know. You haven't played Toilet Princess, right? Is that? Oh, Twilight Princess. Yeah, everyone calls it Toilet Princess, though. Does everybody call it that? Okay, me and the Game Grumps call it Toilet Princess. Why, did the Game Grumps not like it? No, I just see it sound like Toilet Princess. Although, I will say, it's strange they called that game Toilet Princess when Skyward Sword has an entire toilet-based side quest. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh. But yeah, Toilet Princess has, uh, it does have, uh, upgrade. It has one of the funniest upgrades that, I, that I've seen in the game, which is that, um, there is an item, instead of the grappling, you get the claw shot, which is like the grappling, but it grips things instead of piercing into them. Um, can you guess what the upgrade to the claw shot is? I guess what the upgrade to the claw shot is. The, the uh. idea is that you, you shoot it and then it grabs on things and you hang from them. Okay, so I would, I don't know, is it a claw that like pushes things? Like, like you can, like if you grab onto them, you could like push them or pull them in some way? Uh, the upgrade to the claw shot is a second claw shot using your other hand. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. <laughs> and then you can, you can shoot on, grab on something in the ceiling and then shoot and, and fly to something else in the wall. Is the idea. Uh, that, that's pretty good. I like that. That's funny. You, you, you turn you into a little, a you turn into a little Tarzan. Yeah, you find the first one, you're like, oh, cool, and then you find the second, one, like, wait, I already have one though. And the game goes, no, 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 no but you don't understand. <laughs> yeah, use it, both of them, dual wield. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's fun. I, I like that. That, that's, that's silly. I think it's, it's so uncreative. It looks like it's being creative again. Exactly. Yeah, that's like, almost exactly what I was just about to say. <laughs> Yeah, very funny stuff. Funny stuff! Yay, small pee. Oh, like a small pee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because it's just like they're like, we've been playing stuff that is for. Like, we've been playing like Zelda games that were for handheld devices and whatnot. Um, and. I don't know. I am I am a little nervous about getting to the age where they translated Zelda into 3D because I know that Ocarina of Time is supposed to be like one of the best video game experiences of all time. But I'm I'm worried that we are too far away from the novelty of Zelda in 3D for me to get over the fact that the controls appear to be lacking in some fashion. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I will say Ocarina was kind of just a more boring version of Minish Cap in my mind. <laughs> now, but like, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I literally can't say because I don't know, but it, uh, it, it, it's, it's I fucking one of these games shows up on every single like best games of all time list. And the other one is Minish Cap. It, to give everyone the same credit or to give it some credit, what else does? Um, it pioneered the formula. It, it, it it was the first model of the formula. What, do people still drive the first model of car? No. <laughs> I guess that's true. But uh, it was revolutionary, and uh, it's kind of the grandfather. And I don't really understand people still say it's like. I mean, it has some cinematic stuff that other games don't. But also, the cinematics are fucking. Everyone looks like an Oblivion character, but worse. Everyone's like a PS1 character. Woo! Did you fucking see that, dude? Yeah, that was pretty sick. That was pretty fucking sick, dude. Dude, could you imagine mixing the sword and the cape? Oh! Pretty cool, Fucking huh? Sky Strike. Oh, are you trying... Are you fucking spoiling me? Am I? Am I? I don't are know. Are you fucking spoiling me, you piece of shit? I've been wrong about a bunch of things before. I don't know. <laughs> fucking... Because that sounds cool as shit. <laughs> So if you're what not spoiling you me, I'm just going to be disappointed. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> what, what, what else do you think you would mix the sword with? 
uh, the flip staff to make the sword do crazy DMC type shit. That'd be pretty funny. Like, that'd be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Ta-da! I think it would have been really funny, and I don't think they had the resources to do this, but I think it would have been really funny if up until this point, uh, you you had like a tiny jump that would lift you like a centimeter off the ground as a button that you could do. <laughs> Wait, would it have its own dedicated button or would it be an item? It would be just if that slot's empty, I guess, or something. I don't know. Oh, that way. I, can you empty the slot? Until you, yeah, once you don't, as, until you have two items, yeah. So you're saying like at the very beginning of the... Can I not get there? Um, so what you're saying is that at the very beginning of the game, yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're just kind of oh, fucking that was that was pretty this? funny. How do I do you this? were going back, just doing the same. What? Oh, are you trying to get the heart piece? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were trying to go forward. No, no, no I want the heart piece. I was gonna say if you're trying to go forward, then you should not be pointing the other way. I'm running out of hearts. <laughs> You have two fairies, but I don't know if that's worth it. I would rather not, but I do want this heart piece. Because, because funny enough, if I can get this heart piece, uh, I'll be at full health. Well. Oh, shit, I'm at 999 shells, too. <laughs> well, better spend them on Slugula. Dude. You know what? Maybe try jumping there was without the... No, no, no. There was probably a bombable wall. Sure. Also, can... Can you jump without using the cape? I think you can, right? Yeah, you can just do like a little whoop. Just do a little whoop. Maybe, maybe, maybe try it. I don't know if that's I already, far enough I already to tried that. The, oh, little, okay. the little posts seem to immediately stop your movement no matter... Uh, like, no matter how high you are. There. Oh, you flew straight in that guy's claws. Fine. 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 Everything's fine. God, I need, the pearl beam. I need Lon Lon Milk. Don't you appreciate having the peril beam now? I like having the full health beam more, but maybe that's because of the implication. <laughs> there. Oh, fucking shit. Do uh, it's, oh, my God. He, fucking well, hey, uh, he conked me in the head. Dude, you got conked real what good. What the fuck? How am I supposed to deal with this? They're going right out. You can jump over them now. Fucking Jesus. Uh, I don't know. Shield. You don't have the shield equip. Dude, I'm gonna die. Perhaps. Okay, he's dead. You have to bait up their attacks and use the peril beam. You have to use the peril beam, but you can. The peril... The peril beam just deals normal damage, right? I think so, yeah. Dude, I'm gonna die. You do have to dodge when you're baiting their attack. That's I'm, part I'm of fucking baiting. working on it. <laughs> okay. It's tough. It's not it's not it's not super easy. I will say that um uh Did I just nope. Okay, Jesus. That is a minor shortcoming of this game is that you can only have two slots because of A and B, but then in Wind Waker you can have three. Same with Ocarina. In uh in Link uh in Link's Awakening it's the same thing where you can only have um you can only have two. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a lot of the same stuff. Oh, Having shoot. more buttons mappable. I like games where you can map your own buttons and it's, it's significant. That's pretty nice. I agree. I concur. I cur. You don't cun? You cur. Fiend. Oh, Devil. thank God. A heart. Now you lost the peril a blame. single heart. But at least you I'm further away from death. The... Also, what the fuck? How am I supposed to do that? Quick, bomb know. this wall. I think this is about where the other thing would have been. Who knows? Maybe? Nope. Fuck me. You, you know what would be useful? If you had that little thing in the jar that uh, helped you find hearts better. I mean, I guess so. You know, that's not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to... You know, oh, I wanted to push. Have a health potion. There we go. I mean, you can push those while you're small. Oh, I guess... I didn't know you could push small big too. Makes sense though. <laughs> it does. It, it arguably makes more sense than being able to push them small. True. Ta-da! 
I remember that you can use jars for things. Jarvis. Jar sus. All right, jump. Got hey, it. There you go. No! Oh! Oh, 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 moblins. Oh and wizards. Oh my god, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of bad guys. They're casting ice spells at you. I knew it. I'm a dragon type. I'm weak to those. No, you're a flying type. I'm a flying type right now, but I'm a dragon type at heart. You're a flying steel type. I did like uh, back in the days when I was a big Zelda head, I, I liked seeing the mixed Zelda Pokemon, seeing what types everyone would be. Sure, I can see that, yeah. What would, what would, well, Link would definitely be fairy now, but what would he be? Grass fairy, probably? It depends on which Link. You know what? Good point. Fucking uh, Twilight Princess Link would probably be like, I don't know, Dark Beast. beast. type. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. There isn't a Beast type. Beast type is my thing because I'm the first one to come up with that. I think I think probably it would be fair to assume that almost every Link is a Steel type of some sort and then the other their secondary type is based on the game they're on. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that's a reasonable. I think that's a reasonable summation to make. Like, like if you like if you propose that at a at a meeting, I would be like, yeah, that makes sense. But I don't know. Like, I, funny enough, I know that he's like really in, integrally tied to the Master Sword, uh, like in you in, in the games and stuff. But I don't. I don't really associate him with steel that much. That's fair. Maybe that's just me though. Because like, what would he be in Wind Waker? Actually, I, I in Wind Waker, he'd probably be fairy water. Uh, he, you could argue for flying water. Probably. I haven't actually played it, so if that makes more sense, then it then I guess that makes sense. Let's go. The, the concept of Wind Waker is that instead of an instrument like most of the others in those games, you have a conductor's baton and you conduct the winds to do your bidding. Oh! Oh, it's a dark nut, but red. It's a red nut. Oh, you've switched the shield. Now you're having an honorable knight's duel. He has the reach advantage, but you have the protagonist advantage. Protagonist advantage. I don't know if you noticed, but this is one of the many, many, many oh, games accepting Breath of the Wild where Link is left-handed. Oh, it's a character trait of his that didn't survive in the 3D because they thought it'd be too weird controlling that in motion, but then they dish both controls, not even an excuse anymore. Because <laughs> for Skyward Sword, you know, most people are right handed, he has to be right handed, but then they didn't do a Skyward Sword again, and now there's not really good reason, but they still ditched it anyway. I miss I like him. Link. I like him being left handed. Like, I think yeah, that's one of the I think that's one of the things that Baba and I argue about the most is like representation simply for familiarity's sake. Where it's just like, you remember that there was a period in time where people were fucking beaten for being left handed? Yes. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. It's just I was doing the beating. <laughs> you were doing the beating. Nice. And and so it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's it would be really cool if there was like a. Uh, I mean, I guess he kind of is, but like, it would be really cool if there was like a popular video game protagonist who was left-handed. Just so that he way was. some... No, I know, but he's not anymore, right? That's what you said? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, is like, it would be cool if he was still left -handed. I mean, Luigi? Yeah, but Luigi's not cool. <laughs> Good point. You hurt me. This is a creepy temple. Oh, what the fuck? That's, that's, that's broken. Look over there. You can see the water is slightly different. <laughs> Do you see where the sea looks a little different? Ah, that fucking that clip, dude. Well, like this guy, like... <laughs> He's like, would bones, you, bones, 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 bones. Would you do that if you were a skeleton? Where, where you had yeah, the ability to like bones, dislocate yeah. your bones? Oh, uh, dude, there's a uh, you could play as a skeleton PF2 and one of my builds is like bone missile where you sacrifice some HP to throw a bone at someone. So what your HP in that game is is representative of your overall like 
<laughs> your overall stability as a skeleton. Well, only only if you're playing as a skeleton, that's part of it. But it is assumed that you like regrow enough bones to throw them like uh, every time you take a rest because you're a magical skeleton, not just a dead one. You know, you know, you know that mechanic from um, from Houston. No, Houston no, what was it called? Yeah. What was it called? It was uh, you played it a lot. I played it with you once. I had the nine foot tall skeleton lizard woman. What's it called? Oh, Divinity Original Sin. Yeah, Divinity Original Sin two. You uh, fucking I adored in that game the idea that undead characters were hurt by healing but healed from poison. I thought that was really cool, and I don't. I can't really think of much other circumstances in which something like that existed. I know that's like I know that's like a thing that they do in Final Fantasy apparently like a lot because like in Final Fantasy I don't know apparently there's like a bunch of them but like in a bunch of Final Fantasies death is this fucking status effect. <laughs> they uh oh shit dude oh hey thank you. They do uh, in 3.5 PF20 and PF2 e it is like that in 5e they. Did in a weird way where undead aren't inherently immune to magical healing. It's just that almost every magic healing spell has the te text at the end. This spell doesn't affect undead. Hmm, that's kind of clunky. Exactly right, but uh, it's a little, it's, it, it's dissatisfying in a way that doesn't like. Like I'm proud of you guys for doing the mechanic because it is a cool idea. But I wish that there was a more elegant solution. I guess. I mean, it's sad because back in the day, that was part of, you know, the whole gimmick of clerics is that you could both hurt undead and heal your allies at the same time. Now they're distinctly separate abilities that only activate in distinctly separate times where, yeah, you can turn undead, but you're not doing anything to help your allies in the meantime. You're just turning undead. And oh, it that was, like, a, that was yeah. another thing that I was trying to figure out because I know that last time we talked, I was uh, complaining about like how melee characters don't really seem that exciting, I guess, like from from a like from a like i don't know from like a narrative perspective it seems a lot like just people kind of slashing at each other um which i guess it literally is but that was the other thing was that man i i'm uh it's really hard to find like especially if you're playing like an mmo or something like that it's really hard to find somebody who genuinely enjoys playing like a support healer type because you really don't get any glory for doing so. You know what I mean? Um, it's really a thankless job. And so I was trying to figure out like, is there a way that I could either fuck up a system that already exists in D&D &D or like homebrew something that would make this inherently a more, oh, I can jump. Of course I can jump. Um, or that I can make this inherently more of an exciting thing. So the the thing that I eventually like sat upon and was like, you know what, this is good enough. It's 3 a.m. I need to go to bed. Is a uh, fucking uh, vampire healer, <laughs> like somebody somebody who deals damage and then can reserve a small amount of that damage uh as like a secondary resource and then when they apply healing to somebody they can expend that secondary resource as like additional healing on top of that so at least they're like you know getting benefit for doing both of these things back and forth i don't know sure. it was There's, just a... um oh sorry no i was gonna say the the thing you said where like healers and lori is like as far as clerics go and druids that's actually super not the case in 5e as far as the community generally goes because for them healing is a tacked on thing they do sometimes where they're not busy kicking people's asses okay because those classes are actually really really strong because healing is tacked on for almost all cases except for like if you're a cleric devoted to a healing god then yeah you're gonna be healing but no clerics in 5e are some of the strongest classes in the game because their domains are kind of fundamentally really, really strong. Uh, what does that mean again? So, uh, in 5e, the classes are almost all have a choice you make. This is either archetype or your deity or, you know, your nature circle or whatever. For clerics, it's their domain, which is the area of concern of their god that they focus on. So, Tempest domains, war domains, like life domains, so on and so forth, just means you have a god that focuses on that as some of their aspects. Um, as what this means mechanically is, 
clerics start out with base of simple weapons, uh, light armor, medium armor, and shield, which is a good base. Um, a lot of the domains give you proficiency in martial weapons and heavy armor, which makes you, that's the framework to make a really strong melee character. On top of that, divine spells, cleric spells, are almost all damage, buff, or healing. And healing is like a very narrow selection of those, so really you're buffing and damaging, which are two of the most easiest ways to get recognition. You buff your allies, they're like, oh hell yeah, now I'm, now I'm buffed, or you hear everyone's like, oh hell yeah, now they're all dead. Um, Okay. On top of you being in the front line, because you will often have heavy armor and martial weapons, you'll be able to go in there and hit things yourself and be in the front. Clerics are actually pretty damn glorious as far as, like, recognition goes in 5e. Okay. I can appreciate and then, that. And then druids are nutty because they have specific spells that are really fucking busted. <laughs> I have the... from some of the Dimension 20 stuff, I saw... I, I yeah, the didn't goose. quite understand what was happening, but I saw somebody summon, like, and chickens at once, and then that each chicken Ishii. got two attacks. So, uh, Erika Ishii, one of my favorite D&D players and celebrities and internet personalities because she represents uh, SCA, still non-binary, and it's cool. But point is, she plays a druid, and she is like, hey, Brennan, I'm gonna summon uh, a bunch of geese. And Brennan's like, okay. And it's like, geese are birds. And Brennan's like, yes. And it's like, and I have them use the stats of a velociraptor. But so so like how does that work? Because like she summoned so like okay it's like I understand that she was holy shit I'm I'm fucking dead. Where? Fucking Jesus! Where do I spawn? Let's see. Probably the beginning of the section where you entered the temple from outside. Oh. Oh no. Oh well. Um. But yeah. So like so like the thing was was that. I, I, I picked up on it a little bit where it's like, okay, the spell specifically tells you that you need to, uh, you, like, you have the ability to summon a certain total collective challenge rating of creatures, I think, is what it yes. said. And so it's like, okay, so that's yeah. why, that's why they were able to summon, like, a bunch of geese or whatever. <laughs> but then, if they had stats of a raptor, what are the, what's the challenge rating of a raptor? So, here's the thing. 5e challenge rating is often deceptive when it comes to lower CR monsters. It's generally more or less accurate at higher CR, but lower CR, the problem is about action economy. And sure, a, a, a raptor is a small creature who does like a d4 damage and it's not very strong in its own. However, they are not meant to be used, they're meant to be in packs. And the more of them in a pack, the more collectively dangerous they are to the point where it no longer scales linearly. Um, oh. Oh, so when she summoned like eight of them at the same time, the yeah. collective challenge rating went from like one to like 20 or whatever. So, sim like basically, yes. Um, their idea is that uh, they don't do a lot of damage on their own, but they have a at least decently accurate attack that gets exponentially more so because they get advantage when they're next to an ally, they get pack attack. And because they're all next to each other and all like the same thing, they have incredibly accurate attacks that uh, don't do a lot of damage on but it's basically like thinking about casting fireball. Each of them does a d4, there's eight of them, it's eight d4 damage every turn with you not having to do anything, you still have your actions free. So, so action economy is a fucking ridiculous, enormous thing that you have to like <laughs> really be paying if attention you, to when you're when you're when you're like building an encounter you really gotta you pay didn't attention pick up on this yes this is another reason why linear fighters exponential mages is a fighter gets maybe one or two extra attacks as over the course of their career a mage gets spells that target more and more and more creatures as they go on which if effectively you, you, increases their action yeah. economy because they're hitting more things whereas the the melee yeah, person the, can only hit like one or two the other thing is, that's the basic principle, but another thing that mages can do that fighters generally can't is steal actions. They can make it so their enemies have less actions. And when you do that in an area effect, it's really noticeable when suddenly 40 guys lose their turn because your mage cast a big spell that meant they have to waste their turns moving or disabling something or going around something. So yeah, that's another so this is, so, aspect so, so, we, so we come back to the same issue that I had previously, which is like, so, so then melee characters are just kind of, like, less good. 
generally their whole thing is they hurt people a lot or they mitigate damage is a thing that a couple of them do because um, like that's because like i've seen i've seen like hello am i too high for the fucking bird <laughs> it's uh yeah not used to that high up wow yeah. really uh, oh and then this leads yeah. to the temple that i just did anyway so Okay, so because like I've seen I've seen clips of somebody being like like they're a rogue or whatever, and it's like okay they get fucking they get fucking sneak attack they get auto crit on whatever fucking enemy they get an entire for round sure. to act for free they get like all this stuff and then the person just holds in front of them like like a fucking movie poster where it's like a million dice all at once and they're like this is my first turn of damage and they just obliterate like a major npc in the in the narrative or whatever that i can yes. understand but like a barbarian just kind of like raging and just kind of like soaking up damage i know it's really important but it is kind of like mm. It depends on the narrative you're going for and what you want from your character. Some people like the idea of feeling invincible, which barbarians are pretty damn close to as far as players go. No, I believe I believe that, yeah. Um, like the idea of barbarian, because barbarians will survive what no other class can survive. Uh, like you. What you was stand the one there. from a What was the one from a crown of candy where uh, what's his oh, yeah, face? King the, Amathar. Yeah, the king got pushed off of a like what? It was like a sixty-story height which under all circumstances absolutely would have killed him but then he got lucky on his first roll so with his other two turns he was able to like rage and recover so that way he survived yes. with like 16 health as opposed to negative 30. yes uh, so that like is i can believe fantasy. i can believe that i can believe, but it, like i don't know maybe it's just because i'm thinking in like video game terms but like it feels kind of weird to me that barbarians are tanky i guess I feel like barbarians should go fucking ape shit, and I guess they kind of do, but that's how they act in Pathfinder. Fucking <laughs> well, um, well, stop talking about Pathfinder, stop all right? Stop bringing up points relevant then. Fucking <laughs> okay. We'll talk about three point five then, because that's what the first Pathfinder is based on. Three point five barbarians are glass cannons. No, no, no but I right? mean, like in a literal sense, you can keep talking about Pathfinder. It's just the thing where it's just like I just remembered you. For like fucking two years when we lived together, you were just like D and D, D D, D D, D and now it's like, oh, I'm finally in D and D. You're like, oh, I'm on Pathfinder now. That's the progression. Maybe someday you'll evolve too. I God damn it! What do you want from me? Look, I'm just uh, trying uh, to homebrew stuff, and apparently Pathfinder is harder to homebrew stuff for. To be to be perfectly fair, PF2 didn't exist when I was in college. It's a fairly new system. Is that true? It's fairly new, yeah. Wow, okay. Um, PF1 existed, but that's a fucking shit show. Um, but the, but the, basically, Barbarian went through a big change of identity. In older editions, Pathfinder, first edition 3.5, Barbarian's whole thing was they were a glass cannon. If you didn't have the time to wait around for your fighter to like successfully block and parry attacks and then kill them, Barbarian was going to go there, win initiative, rage, and kick ass, and then if, they, if everything wasn't dead on turn one, they probably went down. Probably. Um... So it's like real, really high. So so it's like literally just diving your opponent, regard. So being reckless. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Which sounds like a, something a barbarian would do, like in fiction. Yes. <laughs> the the problem was that barbarians had even less things to do back then than that. Nowadays, barbarians have different flavors. Like, oh, you can be a storm barbarian. You like exude fire around you. You can have like ancestor spirits protect your friends or whatever. Uh, back then, barbarians literally were the simplest class to the point where if you wanted to play a barbarian, just play fighter with a low barbarian so you can still rage, but you have all the fighter stuff of heavy armor, more feats, etc, etc, etc. Barbarians back then were not in a good place. Uh, so, so has, the thing that, so yeah. the thing that we, so the thing that we talked about briefly yesterday, or not yesterday, sorry, like last week, literally, um, where it's like while raging your ability has like extra stuff on it is there any yes. other class that has a mechanic similar to that like an install um where i like literally you don't know what that stronger. means but sure it's a fighting game turn uh in fighting games if you pull off a, some characters have an install quote unquote where it's basically a buff stage um where you're buffed okay um, that's a fighting game turn rather than a fucking ttrpg turn but i've been using it fighting games so there's an overlap with my friends who play those anyway um Wizard, one of the wizards has that called Blade Song, where it's basically like the magic, like, oh, it's an elf magic of blending swords and sorcery. Um, where you can go into <laughs> fucking give me your lunch money, Adrian. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you won't be able to take it once I back to the Blade Song. <laughs> I got uh, my Blade Storm active. But yeah, Blade Song was uh, it's an ability that wizards can do, where uh, so that specific blade singing wizard. Uh, the point of the archetype is that you're both a wizard and also kind of a warrior. Um, when you activate Blade Song, uh, you get a bunch of minor buffs, but the biggest thing is that you suddenly add your intelligence to AC, which mathematically kind of breaks the game because you shouldn't. You're not supposed to do that. Um, wait, add your obviously. intelligence or your intelligence modifier? Your intelligence modifier. Wait, um, so but either way, still. wait, what? But can a mod can a modifier go up to like ten? It can go to five. So is that how that works? What's the math modif- for determining a modifier again? Isn't it like one third rounded down or something? That's some shit. But long story short, okay. So Blade Song Wizards, right? Sure. Uh, let's say you max out your Dex and Intelligence. That's around level eight or so or twelve. You can do that. So you have ten base plus five from Dex plus five from Intelligence. You have twenty AC. That's the same as a full plate fighter using a shield. Now, what if? you had full plate on top of that because you can do that in this game. Then you'd have 30 AC. Or no, sorry. No, sorry. I'm, I'm thinking ahead of myself. You wouldn't add your dex anymore. You'd add 18 plus 2 from shield plus 5. You'd you have, have 25 have, you have AC. heavy plate, which, reduces, which eliminates the ability yeah. for you to dodge stuff. So, so Blade Song Wizards can easily get to 25 AC. And that's like only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to AC min-maxing. That's before Kestakel's like shield, which comes up to fucking 30. Um, or any other AC boosting things, which is possible, but just harder to do. So within the, um, so within the like the like fiction slash narrative, whatever. Oh my god, I'm at full health, dude. This is legit the best place for us to like finish off stream. I just got to full health. <laughs> congrats. Anyway, let's finish up the chance. current. Let's finish up the current topic, and then we'll and then we'll call it a call it a stream. But um, so within the fiction of the game, so it's like okay, you're doing like your blade. Song? Blade yeah, Song? Blade Storm? Blade yes. Song? Uh, so you do song. all this stuff, and now your AC is fucking... I, I'm assuming you're gonna list off some Insane. more bullshit, and you're gonna get up to, like, 38 or something. Right? It's too high, yeah. Where where it's, like, even with plus, eight, uh, plus 18 to hit, they still need to crit in order to be able to actually hit you, or some bullshit. So, yes. within, the na- within the narrative of the world, what is that wizard doing? Well, in the narrative of the world, the wizard is in full plate and using a shield and is prote- is providing himself with a bunch of objective magic, so much so that he is more hard to hit than the fighter. However, here's the thing, Dimension Returns, because it doesn't matter where AC is, natural 20 hits you. True. Um, on top of that, you can target saves, any number of any of the six, especially reflex and fort, as far as wizards go. Or sorry, dexterity and strength. Or con. Uh, so... AC is good, but it's not the only defense you have to manage all your other stuff. And also, AC is just the most common thing. AC is the most common thing that affects your HP. Um, The thing is, the the glaring weak point of Blade Song is that you still have the Wizard's Hit Dice of a D6, and it doesn't help your HP at all. So if anything gets past your AC, aka throwing a fireball at them, but they can't block with their shield or AC or armor, then they still melt as much as any other wizard does. I counterspell it. That's that's the thing, but then you know traps, things that aren't spells, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. But long story short, there are ways to get really, really busted in one way in D and D, and usually that's enough to be busted in general. But there are ways to get around that that you have to learn as can D&D I, if your can players I ask are being Can I one more tangential D and D ish related question? Well, it's literally D and D related um, sure. from a crown of candy. I do genuinely yeah. have a question. You remember the fight where they go up against the sugar plum fairy or whatever? Yes. And the giant icicles fall from the ceiling, and it's a constitution save and not dex? Yeah. Weird Does choice that on make, this part. Because it's a giant icicle falling. It feels like you should dex to escape, like a, like dex to dodge it, and then if you, do, if you don't, then it should be constitution to see if it knocks you out. That, that's the thing, is that... Um... Brandon Lemulgan and my friend Poison have the same thing in common where they made a spicy choice in what saving throw applies here because um, imagine you're a barbarian, right? And imagine this is a strange different system that I won't name where to have to rage, you have to not be fatigued. Okay. Uh, imagine combat starts and an enemy uses an effect uh, and you have really, really good con saves. Your con saves are amazing because you're a barbarian. The effect targets your reflex. And you're like, okay, you fail the effect. All right, you're fatigued now. 
and you, you haven't gotten your turn, you haven't raged. And now you can't rage anymore for the combat because you just got disabled turn one by an effect that goes against a, by a save that goes in effect and targets one of your weaker saves that traditionally isn't associated with fatigue. Uh, sometimes DMs make spicy homebrewing choices, and that's just kind of fucking. In order sucks to for in order to ensure that the because like the thing was was that it kind of seemed like in that particular circumstance that Brennan pulled out this random ass icicle because the fucking cotton candy monk was able to clear the entire combat arena in one turn, <laughs> you know? And it seemed like that combat encounter kind of stopped once you cast fire magic on this egg. So, I mean, that's the that's monk's gimmick is that they're very, very mobile. That's kind I mean, of and they thing. literally gave him a homebrew item that tr tripled his jump height and distance yeah so well that's not a that's not a home ride with boots of bounding um which is an actual thing it's probably but, flavor, but, but they just flavored it as his staff yeah okay i, I mean, mean sure i mean i don't see yeah that's 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 fine but like but anyway anyway yeah. yeah the point is that that's just a choice that sometimes dms make i mean i get it sometimes I, well, back when I was newer DM, I'd be like, "Oh fuck these players! They're always thwarting my plans." All right, this rogue is so good at decks. I have a I have a, I have a, I have a con save instead, nah, and then you win. But then you realize that's not the point of the game. It's to tell a good narrative and not to win as the DM. Yes, so I, I, don't know. I understand that because it's just like, like I don't know, like I almost feel like, like, like I said it before, but it's just like I almost feel like to not take damage was should have been the deck save in some way or maybe even to like take half or something i don't know because it was a giant icicle in the narrative so it makes sense that it'd be hard to dodge but then it's like i don't know does D D have like a frozen status or something like that like like because it's like if the icicle like just make the icicle really cold and it's like okay that makes sense to have a constitution yeah. save against and it's like okay you fail your constitution save now your i don't know now your movement is zero until you thaw or something i don't know the generally it's not that you get like frozen by ice but usually the thing is just it reduces your speed for a certain amount of time by a certain amount That's okay so literally ice... what i just said okay yeah although for a monk it generally does it matter because the speed of creek decreases usually pretty small <laughs> okay all right good job uh we'll be back tomorrow more minish cap get hype i hope that we'll finish the game tomorrow i was planning on finishing it this weekend so i guess we'll see but anyway. just play the game with times two speed easy <laughs> yeah sure that'll definitely help me <laughs> i'll help you not die more there you go all right good night good night stream